Hello, and welcome to The Rob Burgess Show. I'm, of course, your host, Rob Burgess. On this, our 216th episode, our returning guests are Ash Burgess and Jonathan Fowler. You first heard Ash Burgess and Jonathan Fowler together in episode 82, which was recorded in 2017. Ash Burgess has been a guest on 27 previous episodes, and Jonathan Fowler has been a guest on 56 previous episodes. For a complete list, check the show notes. Ash Burgess has a dusty degree in religious studies and an appetite for both high and low culture. She strives to celebrate the best of every season with her young children. Follow her on Instagram at Ash Burgess, all one word, and subscribe to her YouTube channel. Jonathan Fowler graduated with a BA in history from Indiana University in 2006. He is an unabashed left-wing political junkie. He has lived and worked in South Korea for over 10 years trying to help the citizens of that great nation hopefully talk pretty one day. A quick programming note. This episode contains anywhere from passing mentions of to complete spoilers for the following books, TV shows, and movies in order of appearance. Yellow Jackets, Lost, Severance, The Wilds, Dexter New Blood, Red Rocket, The Florida Project, Tangerine, the Office, The Jungle Book, The Little Mermaid, Encanto, Frozen, Frozen 2, Moana, Black Mirror, The Ultimatum, Love is Blind, Don't Look Up, American Honey, Darling Girl, Spring Breakers, Bridgerton, Succession, Boss Baby, Hamilton, Turning Red, the Lion King, Cats, Castaway, The Walking Dead, 365 Days, 365 Days This Day, One True Loves, Daisy Jones and the Six, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Gonzo, The Life of Hunter S. Thompson, Seinfeld, You, Pitch Perfect, Parasite, Six Feet Under, the White Lotus. And now on to the show. Okay. Well, oh, are we recording? No. Yeah. Oh my. All right. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So, um, the Yellow Jackets, we watched it. I mean, okay. We, as we were saying, our biggest problem, both of us think, is the supernatural element. And you yeah. agree, right, Bob? I feel like they snuck it up on us, too. I don't feel like they like they, it. Through. They teased it the whole time. I just don't think it's necessary. No, it's not necessary at all. I would much I rather think, just see... Yeah, straightforward. They're lost in the woods. And they it's terrible. I mean, of course it's going to be terrible. They're lost in the woods. We don't yeah. need all of this other stuff. I know. And I have to... I hate to say it because, like, I started watching some reviewers on YouTube who do good, do good reviews and everything. I like them a lot. But um, they kept cheering on for more Supernatural. Like, they, they were waiting for it to go Supernatural. And I was like, guys, no, no, no. You know? It's things like that when it's like... You start out feeling like you agree with somebody because they're like, this is great, and you're like, yeah, this is great, and then you start to think, like, I have nothing in common with this person because the thing that I hate most about this is apparently what they like. Yeah. Like, okay, the thing with the bear, like, that's that was a no for me. Like, remember how the, they're all starving they, and they then the bear... The bear. But, it, but it's like the bear magically came to them and then stood still so that they could then be like, now we will eat you. Yeah. You know, and like that was that was so unnecessary. I think they have such a good story just from like what I saw in the first one or two episodes, mm-hmm. and then they just started getting really like, oh, you know, there's some force that's keeping them there, and there's this bear that sacrificed, like you said, and just a lot of things happened that were not necessarily the core story they were telling. No, they don't need a force to be keeping them there. I mean, they're in who knows where in the mountains, right? Like, isn't that enough to keep them there? Are they in Canada? Yeah, the I Canadian think they are. Like, yeah. Canada, Cana- right? They're in the Canadian that's, Rockies. That's a big enough wilderness that if you didn't <clears throat> know where you were, mm-hmm. you might not be able to walk out of it. Yeah. We don't yeah. need like a myth- mystical force keeping you. I know. You can go on YouTube and you can watch a documentary about the, the real plane crash that happened down in the Andes or whatever, mm-hmm. right? The one that Alive was based on? You yeah. Know? No, I didn't. I never watched that movie. But, you, but it's the same one, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. So, but that's interesting enough. You don't need to add any magic to it. So, I do think it kind of jumped the shark. And I also think they didn't answer enough questions. 
Like, we were promised cannibalism at the beginning of the season. They, well, they tease it the whole time that it's like, I, I felt like the promise that was made in the first episode is that we're going to eventually find out who gets eaten. That's, you know, like in that first scene in the beginning, we're going to find gun. out who that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, they're just like, no, we're still not going to show that to you, maybe next year. Yeah. You need to find out who it was. And who, yeah, I mean, like, and it, you know, a lot of these shows, they get canceled before they even get a second year, so it's very presumptive of them to... Although let's hope that with the Juliette Lewis Christina Ricci combo they wouldn't be canceled. Yeah, I've got to say for season two, Christina Ricci is doing a lot to hold me on, hold my attention on this show. (laughs) And she always though. (laughs) Yeah, I had a crush on her when I was a kid. So (laughs) she plays crazy very well in the show, I think. The combination of her and Juliette Lewis, though, is fantastic. Yeah, they're two different flavors of crazy, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) Hmm. Like, Christina Ricci's more like the Nurse Ratchet, you know? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. But I feel like Lost had a similar problem with the supernaturalness, and also didn't they have the smoke monster, which is kind of equivalent to the bear in some ways? Yeah, yeah. Although the smoke monster, I feel like, was more, like, far-reaching than the bear. I mean, the bear is maybe, like, a symptom of a larger issue, I guess, which would be the smoke monster. Yeah, but it, but again, it couldn't be enough that their plane just crashed on this deserted island. It had to be also that there's this project or whatever, and now, you know, all this other, and the others, and, you know, it's and, 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 you know, adding more onto it, I guess. I don't know. And it's upsetting, like, like the whole storyline with the woman who's running for office. Yeah. That she also made the, like, weird altar in her house or whatever. Mm-hmm. I feel like that story's gotten an incredibly upsetting. Yeah. I was relieved, mm-hmm. though, when we figured out that the person that her kid was seeing through the window was her. Yeah. And not, like, some kind of, like, an apparition or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was creepy. Like, when she was eating the dirt, I yeah. was like, okay. I'm gonna, you know, play yeah. some Minecraft and go to bed a couple, you know, an hour later when I <laughs> recovered from that. <laughs> right. So, but um, you know, a, a, the show I watched recently, most recently, probably was Severance, mm-hmm. and Severance I think is kind of the opposite in that respect, in that it starts strong and it promises some answers by the end of season one, and it certainly delivers in the final episode. So, and at the same time, like. I'm still waiting for season two, but it was a situation where a lot of TV shows that want to hold everything for next season and they they don't give a proper ending at all. But this one, they they wrapped it up very nicely. Who's who's in that? I don't, well, the actor, I don't know his name, but Mm. you've definitely seen him in things. Now, I've been trying to get you to watch The Wilds because it's not as good, but it's incredibly similar to Yellow Jacket. Mm-hmm. But it does take the story in a different direction. Very. Like when we first started watching it, we thought it was like a ripoff of Yellow Jackets so that they kind of rushed to production to kind of you know fill the void or whatever. And then we realized it's actually older mm-hmm. because there are already two seasons out. Mm-hmm. And it definitely takes the whole concept in a different direction. Okay. I mean, it's a deserted island instead of a wilderness. Yes. To start out with. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there's a whole other, you know, there's a whole other, in some ways, I would actually say the direction it goes in is better than the supernatural direction of Yellow Jackets. Mm -hmm. Really, the only thing that makes Yellow Jackets better is the cast. True. Hmm. Yeah, that is, yeah, I was kind of going through both of those, I mean, that one and also the Dexter New Blood at the same time. Did you finish Dexter New Blood? Yep. What did you think of that ending? So upsetting, right? I don't know. It's, Are you gonna follow Harrison to Paris? I don't want to. No, I don't want to deal with Harrison. No. Okay. Well, Lost. That was a thing that I didn't finish. I never I didn't finished finish that either. And like, I wanted to go back and rewatch it, but it was like I started the first episode, and the first episode, you know, it's crashing and everything's, it's pretty chaotic and it's enjoyable. But when I hit the second episode where it gets into the, the melodrama. Where you just like, oh, and, I don't have the energy And season for this one is 25 again. episodes. Wow. And I'm like, oh my God, how did I ever get through this? Like, what did I have to do back in 2000? And you had to wait a week in between. No, it's, I, it's hard to work up the momentum to watch a show like that from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Especially once you feel like you've already, you've already watched so, so much. much. Yeah, you've already watched so much of it. It's like, 
I've, I've right watched at least me? 75 hours of the show already. Right. <laughs> like, and then you've already heard some spoilers, yeah. so there's less motivation to keep mm-hmm. going. And it just, I don't know. Sometimes it, I feel like a lot of shows, if you, if you don't catch them at the time, it's just... Yeah. There's no way to go back to watch yeah. them. Yeah. Unless you never saw it at all. Then you can start at any time, maybe. But I think if you're watching it when it's happening and then you drop off, chances of return are, like, really low. But I, I think there are a lot of people who rewatch like, as kind of, like, comfort food, like The Office. True. Yeah. So, so, Definitely, yeah, for sure. I feel like I used to rewatch stuff more though, mm-hmm. and oh. now it's like I just don't feel like I have time. Yeah, like what little free time I have has to be for 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 new things. Like I almost feel guilty rewatching something. Like, man, yeah. like it could be doing something new, but instead, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to think of what else there was. I mean, what else is there to talk about? With your, I, I feel like it's kind of like Game of Thrones condensed into one season. It's just like <laughs> I get so much promise at the beginning, and then by the end, I'm just like, what happened? I don't really care. It's kind of. I don't know. I was upset when they murdered that one guy, like the mm. guy that that one woman's having the affair with. Hmm. I feel like that was just unnecessary. Yeah, that was very necessary. Like whether or not he was like somehow involved in the situation. Like, mm-hmm. they, it's one of the, it's it's kind of like when someone sees a TV show about themselves and then they turn it off while the show's still going. It's like <laughs> she could have gotten information from him instead mm-hmm. of just being like, "Oh no!" Like now, yeah. now they'll never know. Like, yeah, I and I feel like I mean the fact that he was alive, but we never actually saw him again. He was dead before we saw him again. It's I like I feel like the. One thing that the show owed us at some point in the season was who all is still alive from the wreck. We have to know that. I think we don't have a definitive list. list. T- but they won't tell us because they're still teasing out who gets eaten. Yeah, yeah. If they, if they tell us who's there, then we can surmise, you know, that a certain number of the other people, the, those are who did or didn't, you know. But they, they want to keep you going like anybody that you haven't seen confirmed as like in the current day could be the person that you're waiting to see, you know. Yeah, but the problem is not everybody gets eaten. Like, we've had a plane explosion, yeah, we've, had, we've had some we've other... Had, yeah, there was the person that... I thought she was gone when she got ravaged by wolves or whatever, but apparently that person's still going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when they tried to have the Viking funeral over her and she was still alive. That was so bad. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think, like, um... Yeah, I, but I, I just think it's like we are, we, at this point, they've died in so many different ways and it's so dangerous out there. If somebody wasn't there in the future, that doesn't mean that they got eaten, right? So we wouldn't necessarily have to assume that. True. You know, there's a lot of ways they could have been killed, so. You just want to see everybody and be like, all right, who's I, here? But I feel like in season two, it's going to be like, oh, there's one more person and we didn't mention them in season one. Well, the very end of season one. I've emerged from the crowd and to now be. <laughs> at the very end of season one, they that Lottie Matthews and her mm-hmm. like cult or whatever emerges. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like we hadn't seen her at all, and then suddenly it's like apparently she's out there. And are the other people in her cult also people that survived partially, or is it just her and some weird other people that she like, you know, took on a following? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's. They didn't have to answer everything, but I do think that they have to answer some questions at the end of the season. And again, that's why I, I feel that Severance is such a good show. It, it answers just the right, right amount, it teases just the right amount, and it moves the story forward in a way that it can't really come back from. Hmm. Interesting. Although, Rob, I think you particularly enjoyed the part where that one guy finds out that his wife doesn't really have a book club. <laughs> Just because I have an online book club that I go to once a week, that I'm, like, chatting with people, mm-hmm. there was no book club. Yeah. <laughs> Not the book club. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot going on. Um, I saw her in a movie recently too, and I can't think of what it was. We saw, saw her in a that, movie too. Yeah. What was, what was the name of that? I don't remember. It's about a house that's haunted. But it seems it's one of those movies that it's like a comedy. Seems like it wouldn't movie. be good, except that it was like. It's it was the concept. Of, it's just so hard to describe, but it was. It, it was weirdly good. had Ryan Phillippe in it. Yeah, it Ryan Phillippe. Yeah. Well, we might want to watch take, this. This might actually take, be something we should take, watch. I take an un, unnameable amount of satisfaction in the fact that Ryan Philippe has not aged well. <laughs> no, he has not. 
Yeah. Like, it even took us, like, a minute to figure out that it was him. Like I know. It was, like, several minutes into the movie when I finally like, realized that <laughs> Ryan Phillippe. Well, let me, let me try to counter-pitch you on uh, Red Rocket, okay? Okay. Red Rocket has got, speaking of movies that are not supposed to be funny, but they might be sometimes, a scary movie, okay? The actor from Scary Movie, one of the actors from Scary Movie. Which one? Oh God, I forgot his name. He 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 he, moonlights as a rapper. Simon Rex. Yes. Yes. Simon Rex. AKA Dirt Nasty. Exactly. Well, there you go. Um, he he is he returns to Texas from Los Angeles with a bruise on his face. He's a he's a former porn star. Um, so I think he is actually a former porn star. Yeah, well, life imitates art. Mm-hmm. We saw Magic Mike too. Okay. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so he uh, so he returns back to his life, and he's like trying to get back with his estranged wife and his mother-in-law and stuff. And he's trying to get his foot in the door in his hometown of like he's like he's somewhere in West Texas, um, Texas mm-hmm. City, Texas, I believe it's called, and. I don't necessarily, he does some very bad things. He becomes a very despicable person towards the end and stuff, but like, I can't describe it. He does a very, the actor does a really good job. You're like totally on his side at the beginning, is more or less, and like you can kind of understand his plight. But as the movie goes along, it's just like, <laughs> it's, you, you can see why this guy, well, I don't want to say too much, but it's a, it's a good movie. Mm. It's, it's like kind of funny kind of disturbing, kind of like amazing acting. Mm. Um, he's, he, the, the director uses a mixture of, um, he calls them first time actors, I believe. Mm. Basically people who are not actually actors, just locals to that area. And, stuff. Mm. and then with actors. And like, I bet we're thinking like Dirt Nasty can't turn in a dramatic role. Wrong. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> People might say that. I'm just Straw man argument. Over here. Here. I didn't say that. I never quote. The recorder's been running the whole time. I'll bubble it back. <laughs> um, it's by the guy who did the Florida Project, which is about like a kind of down and out um, community living in long term in a hotel hmm. outside of Disney World in Florida, and just kind of like wow. the underside of southern or. Is it Southern Florida? I think it's more Central Florida. Yeah, yeah. Central Mm -hmm. and Western, maybe. Um, And his first movie was actually, like, back in 2012, I think it was called Tangerine, Mm. and he filmed the whole thing on an iPhone. Mm. Just to kind of, like, prove it could be done. Interesting. It showed at Cannes or whatever, so. I think it's Cannes. Well. (laughs) (laughs) I'll I'll, I'll drink from the can to that. Fair enough. Well, we can stop and watch this thing and then talk about it later. Yeah. You, as a currently childless man, have not been watching a lot of Disney movies. <laughs> no. No. That's, that could be but, an understatement, yeah. But in the last couple of days, you've seen quite a few with us. I've seen two or three, yeah. Partially. Yeah. Yeah, because we, we did Little Mermaid. We rewatched Little Mermaid. Jungle Book. I think you were in and out for that one, and then Encanto, too. So that's three. My mom told me that like Jungle Book was the first movie I ever saw, apparently. And apparently I was really into it. I don't really remember this. I don't really remember it. Um, Little Mermaid is the first like Disney movie I remember really liking, but I was probably six years old when it came out, so I yeah. was kind of a, Yeah, I remember going to the, the theater right to see age that. For that. Being super excited. Lilac. Lilac will sing on the podcast. We doing okay? She's doing good. I'm just trying to hurry and get some stuff recorded before she melts, melts like a fried, fried egg. Um, but yeah, no, Little Mermaid, I, that was huge for me. I was just exactly, I mean, like you, the right mommy, age when it came out. Hi. Hi, Hi Mommy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we've obviously, Bob and I have obviously Hi. seen a lot of Disney movies Hi. in the last few years. Hi. I would say, well, you, well, I think something interesting that you said was that you've always kind of been a little bit, maybe a little bit, uh, put off by, like, Adults that are like super into Disney movies, but it, it's do you judge them more or less if they're childless? 
Well, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, if they're, like, childless and they're really into Disney movies or something, like, that does seem a little weird to me, but at and the same time, like, while like I'm watching... Crotch or something, right? But, I mean, that's, I that's I kind know. of... Everybody has a genre they like. I just, it's kind of a double whammy for me because it's, like, designed for children, or ultimately. And number two, it's usually a musical, and I don't like musicals, really. And it seems like... A lot of Disney material is musical. But I feel like I was only mildly into Disney stuff the whole time that I was like a kid. I mean, as a kid, I, you know, of course, like I loved Little Mermaid and stuff, but like, I wouldn't have said I was even super into Disney as a kid, other than just a normal amount of being a kid and thinking it was neat or whatever. But then, you know, since having kids, we've definitely had time to get into it. Like, I would say now I'm probably more into Disney than I've ever been, just because I've seen it enough with the kids that I've started to appreciate it more. I have more opinions about what my favorite Disney things are yes. than I had before. Well, that, that's exactly what I mean. Like, I have an, and I have an idea of like, I've seen so much of the material that I can say like, here's where their storytelling shifted, or I like this movie because it represents a change from kind of like the old style princess to like the new style princess, or hmm. oh, I like this one because it has great songs, stuff like that. But I wouldn't have ever felt like I had enough like working knowledge of Disney to ever like voice and opinion about before. Now I feel like I could I could probably like claim to be like into Disney in a way that I never Well I would before. one thing I was gonna comment on was that the uh, I think that the like between watching the Jungle Book and Encanto, like the Jungle Book was reasonably slow paced, you know, you kinda could follow what was going on. I feel like Encanto was just such a sensory overload that like things were just happening so fast. And it was all, you know, perfectly organized and perfectly, you know, designed by committee, I would say. I'm sure there's no one under that. They're like 50 years apart, though. I know, well, but it's, 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 it's interesting that a movie for children has such a different effect, though, I think. It is interesting. The, I mean, I think it's interesting that we did pick movies that were kind of from, from different eras of Disney. You know, Jungle Book is like pretty pretty classic not like the very beginning but like still pretty classic yeah, little mermaid was like little mermaid is right when there was that kind of resurgence of disney because i mean there was little mermaid and beauty and the beast and like all those movies in that time period and like aladdin and then of course encanto is like you know the new hotness or whatever yeah i feel like you though, didn't believe me when i said that kids like i've heard multiple children at target when i'm shopping Sing mm -hmm. song from Encanto. I guess unprompted. It's, it's, so, I guess because I can't get the Guinness enough. Okay. There's something about it that I think when you see it multiple times, you get into it because the first time we watched it, I was kind of like, huh? And the kids were like excited. And by the time we'd watched it a few times, like even though I was like getting I was, like, tired. Working, and it was like, yeah. I can't move a mountain. Exactly. Like even though you're tired of it, somehow those songs are like stuck with you. Like it's like an ear, it's like the whole soundtrack is an ear like, How? You know, whereas it's, it's like, like when, when I'm away from my kids, I'm gonna do exactly what I want, and then I'm by myself, and I'm like, I should really go for a song for Frozen right now. Right, right. Really? Oh wow, oh, that's yeah. a that's a hard impulse. Like Frozen, because I know in Korea, I was hearing Frozen songs everywhere, so I can get that. But like the Encanto oh, songs, go. yeah. Oh God, Let It Go, and um, what was the other one from that one? I, I never the, watched. What was the in summer the one? I don't that know. One's good. I don't know that one. Um, oh, there. I mean, there's a lot of songs. Oh my God, I can't believe it. After hit, after hit. And there's two after Frozen hit. movies, two Frozen. plus a few side other projects. Christmas. Okay. Special. Well. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, I think, like, the Disney movies these days especially are very, and maybe in the past, too, are very uh, complex. Like, rub, rub, rub. The, 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 the movies are different now. Like, the way that the characters are has really improved as far as, like, especially when we talk about, like, princess movies, which Encanto is not exactly a princess movie, but, I mean, Little Mermaid definitely is. Yeah. And Little Mermaid is definitely the old-style princess movie where it's all about just, like, she wants to get married or whatever. But you have a huge shift with, I mean, you said you've seen Moana. But no, you said you've seen Moana. And I mean, you can yeah. see how that's like a huge shift as far as like the kind of like princesses that we're telling stories about. Sure. And you know, the same, same for Frozen. Okay. It's no longer just like, oh, the princess wants to get married at the end. I'm, I'm curious about the um, when, for example, um, like when is a story, an established like folk tale, fairy tale, what have you, um, from a real culture, from a real country that's maybe even representative of a culture or country? 
and when is it just kind of like loosely inspired on that culture? You know, I mean, that's I a question. Is, is Moana a real story that's, that's told in the? I don't know. That I think that's imp- I think that's I important think- to know. I haven't. I, I don't have enough working knowledge of the actual, you know, folk tales and stuff that they mentioned in that story. But my impression was that it might just be more kind of inspired by the general, like, you know, I, those I gods of that. like earth and sea and whatever. I, but Frozen, on the other hand, is based on a, you know, I think it's Hans Christian Andersen, the Snow Queen. Interesting. Well, that's well, they're actually they're going back to Hans Christian Andersen, which is the same for. Well, the, they always go back to that or the Grimm's. Well, or, that was the, the the Little Mermaid was a Hans Christian. Anderson, so. But I mean, that's that's rich material. Like you never stop mining that, you know. Yeah, but I, I think it's interesting when they take a an actual story from one country, but then another country, they're just like, oh, okay, we'll just kind of like generally like this could happen in this, you know. Sure. This will be. Is this the second time? Take three. Is this the second time that we've done Are a we? three-way? Yes. Yes. What? <laughs> you said it. Not you me. said it. <laughs> you said it. Not me. I mean, I'm allowed to make jokes. <laughs> <laughs> if it was intentional. It's always Why intentional. Like, what's that? What's the matter, huh? What do you want? It's the best thing about me is that I can everything. You want to go back to mama there? Yes. All right. Watch always. the glass. But so we're back. We're back. Or, or you're back and I'm back. You're always I'm, here, right? I'm always here. I never left. Yeah. So, who are we? I'm Rob of the Rob Burgess Show, yes. host. Mm-hmm. And we, we know me, Ash. We all know you. We all, we all know me. Or those who've been listening to the episodes they should be listening to know me. Yes. Those who haven't been, hello. My second most numerous and first most numerous guests. Well, yeah, I'm Jonathan, you know, the Cha Fowler, so in the house, yeah. Uh, this is our second time in person recording, I believe. Yeah. Um, after 2017, did we do? I think so. Whenever yeah. the last time you were here. Yeah, sounds like, uh, yeah, because that was like when Emerald was uh, an infant. Yes. And now we have another infant. Well, she's even like a toddler at this point. She's like a big, <laughs> big two. What do you what do you think of this specimen right here in the east? No, area? she's very cute. We got a cute baby here who's hanging out, and she's mostly being calm. She was a little calmer yesterday than she is today. But that's just because yesterday she was too scared of you to speak. She's done a lot of staring, but then you gave her some socks brought, today. Brought out some presents, and now she's gotten a little a little looser. Yeah, I brought her some socks from uh, from Korea that she can wear that have frogs on them. So she seems she, very excited. About she's that. wearing them a long time today. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, How I mean, shocked are you that we produced a redhead? Hmm. Yeah, I guess that seems shocking. <laughs> that like, is, would you have seen that coming? I don't know. Yeah, that's like, yeah, that's that's a new one, I guess. Yeah. Although kids' hair can change. Like, I was True. looking at some pictures of myself from when I was very young recently, and um, you were a member <clears> of <throat> Hanson previous in your previous life. <laughs> I was just Hansen. thinking about that when you came to Mitchell. Oh God. Yeah, you I had long got hair. A lot of attention <laughs> because you're. Uh, General aura aligned with the very popular at the time Hanson. Now, which he, which Hanson one. were you? So you, you were, were, I, you were Taylor. I, I, I didn't know who Hanson Isaac were. I just no, like Isaac's one. the old, the old, Who's the trusty middle one? one. I think Taylor. Taylor, Taylor. was the one everyone. Okay. Zach is like the little one that was like Drummer. a little bit too young. Yeah. Too young. Okay. I don't know. The, the real talk is I, I don't think I knew who Hanson was when I grew my hair out or whatever in middle school. But it worked for you. But like it people was, started was, saying, oh, you're like, you look like Hanson or something. Oh, okay. Um, I really didn't know who they were at the beginning, but then like I think I heard them on the radio sometimes, but yeah. I, it was not like my intention to look like Hanson necessarily. No, no, no. Nobody's saying that. <laughs> should we, uh, before I'm peeled like a banana, should we move to the couch? <laughs> like, <laughs> a lot going on. Is that like a small child trying to like look at my shirt? No, Facebook was much better before. When, when it was like, I remember when you first convinced me to join Facebook, and yes. it was just for students, and you could only be friends with other students that were like at the same university. Before anyone's parents found their way on there, mm-hmm. before anyone's boss found their way on there, before anyone's teacher, or like, you know, when it was just like, it was closed somewhat, you know? Yeah. It was, I mean, it was something totally different back then. Oh, yeah. I mean, remember when people would check in and be like, I'm at the library studying, and now it's like, do you want to be murdered? <laughs> like, Remember, it's like, don't tell people that you're walking to the subway right now. You've been poked. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the debates about what poking meant, like, is it, like, what can you can mean? you poke someone as a friend? 
Is if there a non-sexual you... poke? Yeah, but or is there, a, is there a platonic poke? No, that's the thing. And so then, then it's like if somebody pokes you, you then have to spend like the next several minutes like panicking about what it means and whether you should poke them back or not. <laughs> yeah, you know, this was a time when Mark Zuckerberg was at the center of the conversation in a very profound way, and like he's like now he's like oh, Facebook's not Facebook anymore. Now it's Meta, and it's also part of Meta, which is part of the Metaverse, which is like um, you know all this stuff. Um, but all I think of when like I think of meta nobody, is meta world peace. I don't know what that I just means. Can't, but I can't. I can't. Brad Artest changed his name to Meta World Peace. What? This was the prior. Basketball player from this the was Indiana before, University? but this was before the Facebook name change. Okay. Well, that, again, I feel like we're getting off topic, but. But no, this is this is not off topic. This Ron is Artest didn't Ron Artest jump into the crowd and beat a fan at one point? He was part <laughs> of the malice at the palace. Yes. Was that before or after the name change? Uh, he changed his name after I mean, that it because was, he was it to disassociate the, from the incident. He went to the Lakers, and that was when he changed his name. Oh my god! Probably to separate himself from that incident. <laughs> okay, so but we're talking about what are we talking about? Just you know how Facebook well, was better. I gotta edit this. How Facebook was was, was so much better back in the day. Dude, you know, we can't we cannot cut out, can out every it. interesting thing that we talk about. No one's gonna be offended by us saying Facebook was better. Back well, no. in the day, like no, even not... if it's like your parent, unfriend me Facebook. right now. <laughs> like even if it's your parent and they're on Facebook, like you're allowed to say that there was a certain freedom when it was just you and other students. You're allowed okay. to say that. It's was... not like a slam. Like I'm not okay. slamming my parents when I say that. I just, not that I want them specifically to be gone. I want everyone's parents to be gone <laughs> from Facebook. I, that's pretty extreme. I think like, you know, Facebook is good for everybody, but it does have to be, you do have to be able to cycle it, like siphon to different areas and stuff. And I mean, I'm guilty I, of like encouraging my parents to get Facebook accounts originally. Yeah, I, I spread a lot in Korea too. I really, yeah, yeah I don't understand why I did that. No, it, but it seemed so exciting at the time and when you have something There's exciting. There's thing, it's, it's called Facebook. Exactly, it's exciting, it's interesting, you want to share it with people. It. Plus, I, th I think too, it was like, my parents wanted to see more photos, and I was like, well, if you joined Facebook, you could, like, see the photos I'm posting or something. And now, of course, I'm not even, like, using Facebook anymore. I mean, I still have my account, but I only go there to, like, check, like, some groups, but I don't, like, scroll my feed or anything. So it's just, like, I don't know. The pandemic really, I think, was, like, the final blow for me with Facebook. You know, the interesting thing about Facebook right now is that they're buying up all these other things, like WhatsApp and um, Instagram. Instagram, all these things have happened. And the thing is, like, the younger generation, as far as I can tell, you know, just because like nobody really wants to be on the same, um, you know, social media site necessarily as their proverbial parents or whatever that generation. And so I think the fact that there's a younger generation that you know, for people who are our age when Facebook came out, but had kids at that moment, like for their kids, their parents have always been on Facebook as long as they've known them. Nice. And Facebook is like for the parents, so like the kids don't want to join that. So they join Instagram or whatever, TikTok. Well, yeah, I was about to say, is, do you have TikTok? Uh, no, I don't have TikTok. Although yeah, I've seen some it. funny like clips Snapchat. that have come up there and stuff. Snapchat I don't have dead. Snapchat. <laughs> TikTok has replaced Snapchat. Okay. Well, the combination of in Instagram surged back forward and regained the footing that Snapchat had stolen, and then combination, I think, between Instagram and TikTok, I think Snapchat is just like it's been X'd out. There were too many. Too many sexual predators were on Snapchat. What about so. the filters? People like the filters, though. People like, but now there's like a big thing where like some states have banned the filters on Instagram. Why is that? Because facial the filters are yeah, the filters are gathering facial recognition data on you and like. I had to. Ohio and Texas have decided that that's like illegal. I had to do a facial recognition thing to file my taxes this year. But then wasn't, wasn't it like three days later that they emailed you and were like, "We're sorry, this was wrong." We will never be doing this again. Like, you already scanned my face, like, but you wouldn't let me go forward unless I did this, so, like, why? That's, oh, wow. Well. Yeah. You're well. caught in the crossfire. But, no, it's a big deal, though, with influencers who are in the states where they can't get some of the filters they normally use. Because, like, if you've built, like, a business about, like, looking a certain way and suddenly you look, like, so tore up and people are like, what's happened to you? And it's like, this is actually how I've looked the whole time. <laughs> well, that's a sad story for those influencers, I guess, but I don't know. For some um, reason, a lot of the influencers that I follow are like based in Texas, so I'm probably like more aware of this happening. <laughs> okay, but my, my point about the Instagram and stuff and all the stuff being acquired by Facebook is that I think possibly one of Facebook's long-term goals might be to have just like a rotating, um, you know, 
oh, uh, Facebook's not trendy, but this thing is. And, I'm sure. And then, but then, you know, 10 years later, it might be like, oh, Facebook's back. You know, our grandparents, well, I don't know. If you no, I think you're right. Because, I mean, even, like, I feel like now, even now, like, I almost think if they resurrected MySpace, some people would, like, excitedly go there just for, like, the novelty of, like, it's a MySpace, ha 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 ha. I have considered, was, like, I, thing. my MySpace account is still there, and I think both of yours are. I think I, okay. I think you're both still on my top eight. I don't know how to, like, log in. It's, like, a legacy account, and all my pictures I can't wow. see anymore, but there I can tell that, you know that it's somehow yeah. there? the profile is there, but it's, That's, like, a ghost account, and I, I don't even know how to sign into I, it. I, I feel like I had some, I, some weird That's email, depressing. some weird name that like, I don't even, I don't even know, know what they yeah. were. Yeah. yeah. I feel like one of the worst mistakes I made when I was younger was like picking like convoluted like screen names and like account names. Like instead of just being like my name, it's like, oh, be like a dragonfly because that represents who I am as a person, <laughs> you know, like as like my like well, handle or whatever. But there's somebody that keeps trying to buy your old Twitter name. Yes. Someone did try to buy my old Twitter, and I said They've no. They've been stalking I felt, you on different. But apps, they finally, right? they finally have stopped because I finally messaged them back. So I hope they would just go away if I didn't respond. Because I nor I no. normally just okay. don't respond to messages what was from your people old I don't Twitter know. Name? Fraxy, Fraxy, which I have a reason for. I had I had a couple Twitters, but like I had a reason for Shouldn't that. Use one. Any of them. I just I could never get into it. I don't like Twitter, but I had a reason for the name. Though, even though it does fall in the category of like convoluted, I should have just used my name. But it was because Fraxinus is like the name of like the ash tree, like the like oh whatever like the tree. So, so it's, it's like, like the Latin it. name. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Okay, I did not. So know that. yeah, so that was why I picked that, and so it did have like special meaning to me, and I didn't want to let go of it, even though this person supposedly from this organization is like starting some kind of a thing, which I mean if. I believe them about the organization. I do feel bad because it's like about like fragile X syndrome, which I have heard of. It's a real like terrible, debilitating medical condition where you're like Sounds something like is wrong ruin, with some of your chromosomes. Ruin your best, you ruin your breakfast. But it's the eggs are fragile. Oh, yes. but no, that there's a real, there's a real actual like condition that I think is like very terrible. That like it has to do with like yeah. something's wrong with like you're your grits, X chromosome not an or something. But. No, so I mean, if I believe this person is actually from this organization, okay. it's like I do feel bad that I denied them the like Twitter handle. They well, how much, were they, the, how much were they wanting to do? They, they just wanted, they just, they just like wanted, wanted me. To release it. But I grew annoyed because like they when they first messaged me, I just ignored their message because my general thing is that I don't respond to messages from people I don't know like at all, no matter what they want. I just don't like. I don't need to say no, thank you. Like I'm not obligated to even do that. I don't owe you anything. I don't even check my on you know the, the like other yeah. folder of like requested messages. It's just like I only check because I don't like having the little icon that says that. Yeah, I, like, I I do delete it out just exactly. So like I deleted them and deleted them and deleted them, but then I grew annoyed because they like wouldn't stop messaging me, but then started sending messages like, why have you responded to my message? Oh, and then, yeah. yeah, and then they somehow found me on YouTube and commented on a YouTube video that was like, we've tried to reach out to you. Why have you responded to our messages? Why have you, why haven't you, um, can you send us an email so we can email you? And it's like, no, I'm not gonna send you my email address. Go away forever. So I did finally on Instagram reply to one of their messages that was like, look, I'm not interested in vacating my Twitter handle. And I, I was nice, like I didn't say anything mean, but I also was like, I don't owe this person anything. But no. I still honestly felt a little bit guilty because I mean, maybe they just honestly thought- Why do they was, need your one? They could they obviously they could just come one. up with another one. Yeah, no, I know. It's like, it's one of those things though where like, there's two me's. There's the one me that feels bad about like hurting someone's feelings or whatever, or disappointing someone. And there's the other me that like, doesn't care about that because it's like, I'm not obligated to like, give you my Twitter handle just because I'm not using it. Hmm. So It's interesting though that you're not using it and you, well, I guess, I mean, have you used it extensively in the past? I mean, no. I've used it slightly when, I, when I've tried to get into Twitter. I just, how, how many posts have you got, do you think? Probably like three, I don't know. I mean, okay. I don't like Twitter, I'm sorry, it's terrible. Simple. Well, then just sell it. I, but they did not offer me any money and I did wasn't like, ask? no. Would you ask? No. What if they gave you a million dollars? Yeah, what if they gave Because you honestly, dollars? I would feel bad. Like, if they offered me money... You wouldn't and take a I, million dollars? Yeah, if they... Okay, first of all, they're not going to offer me a million dollars. You wouldn't take did, any amount then, of money from them? No, but my point is that their whole approach was like, poor us, we're just trying to put this thing together, and it's so hard because you won't let us have the thing that we wanted. And it's like, I'm sorry, but also no. 
I don't know. There's part of me that just feels like it's mine. Would you, do, so would you give it up, mine. Joe? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That's a hard question, I guess. Honestly, I think if... I, I would have been probably more compelled if they hadn't bothered me about it so much. And if, like, the person bothered... And, and if the person contacting me had had, like, a more, like official this could really be a person with its organization sounding name like there's their handle was like rude boy like number something 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 so it's like how do i even know you're affiliated with this organization you're I, just like was, some random dude i was doing some hiring over in korea one time we were hiring you know foreign teachers and like this one woman wanted to work for our company or whatever but her email that she sent a resume and everything in with was like drunken soldier or something something it's like get a new email to send out your resumes from that, right like, and we ended up hiring her because, like, the oh, couple needed workers at the time. <laughs> like, that's <was>, Ruby, apparently. <laughs> you overlooked that in her resume. Wow. <laughs> I was just like, that's, you know, wow. Like, this is how some people keep going, even though I'm always shocked. Like, how are you still doing this? They somehow. I'm constantly just... amazed. Yeah. We're gonna so make so was... many specific examples. I'd have to edit out of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, well, that's, I mean, it's a thing. Like, I mean, you, you can use that email. It's not a big deal, depending on what the job is. I feel like it's a big it's, deal. I feel it's like. It's a big deal. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people would see that and just be like, no, yeah, you've no. been eliminated. Mm-hmm. Like, just based on that, like, we're not going any further. Yeah. It's so unprofessional. Like, especially when, like, Gmail is free. Like, you could just create a new email most, account. Most for, email like, is totally free. Every day of the week. That's what I'm saying. You could create a new... I mean, I have, like, three email accounts just for personal use. I really should do a thing. I saw, like, a life hack once where it was, like, just make, like create an account like your name one, your name two, your name three, and then do every free trial. When you run out of that one, do the next one, just like through whatever number of huh. accounts. Oh, you mean because like when you do a free trial yes. of something where you have to have an email address yes. to sign up? Yeah, that's probably how a lot of people I could are getting have saved like hundreds stuff. of dollars yeah. already hmm. doing the system. I never thought of, I, The I, only I, thing is you then have to keep straight what your login if, if, unless if like, you ever lose access you or you don't, your login info, you have to like log in every once in a while. And that can be it. a hassle. I mean, I have a lot of login stuff. Like my my stuff is not well password protected. Like I have a lot of stuff saved into my thing. To Somebody just signed into my iMessage from California on a desktop computer that the other concerning. day, and I had to quickly change my password. That is wow. rather concerning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I got a million emails from my email thing. Like, oh, you're you're you signed in from a weird location. It's like. Yes. <laughs> locations I, all the I time. Ordered the t- t- I ordered the tickets through this email address. You right. know I'm traveling. You know that I've gone here. If I say something with the phone off, you send me targeted ads the next day just to get with the program. <laughs> I feel like they're so spotty about things like that, though. Like, I remember once I ordered some books that I wanted to read some books in Italian, so I ordered them from, like, a web- like an Italian that. website. And, like, the bank, like, froze all of our accounts, and it was this whole, like, complicated saga to get them, like, back. And other Meanwhile, purchases we made in this country wouldn't go through in the meantime. Yeah, no, like, it was like we were totally shut down, and that was, like, a whole big deal. But meanwhile, I feel like the time that our identity was actually stolen, the what bank was like, yes, please continue withdrawing more funds from the ATM, people oh. that are in a totally different location than, than where Robin Ash are obviously living. Yeah, you're in... You're well, a, we're not concerned at you're all. In South, you're in a convenience store in South Central LA, and you're also going to Starbucks and Fisher's in the Anaconda. You know, at simultaneously somehow. Right. Okay, I don't have any problem with this. Is it plausible? Right. <laughs> okay. But but no. Getting back to what we were saying about like you know names of like you know handles and things. It's like. Yeah, I, I feel like though it's kind of like having a favorite color. Like when you're young, you feel like making a handle like is like your chance to like say like some profound thing about your identity like i remember in high school having hours long conversations with friends about like our favorite colors and now it's like other than like if someone's buying you a present and wants to know like what color to get like does it even matter you know but when you're but when you're when you're younger though it's like you feel like Oh my Cap is super so excited to find that your favorite color is also blue. Yeah, oh, true. I've always, he was I've very always liked blue. That. Yeah. I've always liked blue. So, yeah. Well, do we want to talk about the movie? Yes. Yes. What, we what was the movie called again? Okay, we watched the movie. Well, we should we should talk about the adult movie that we were not not adult movie. The you adult know what I mean? The movie that, that we was. Watched last <laughs> night. 
right before the right before the three <laughs> but, uh, three two one edit <laughs> no i'm allowed to make jokes oh okay. that was a joke okay that cool. was a joke yeah no so, I, when i say I'm adult it's just anything. when i say no I'm leave all my jokes in i i oh, come on. little known what? fact about me i'm hilarious I don't. I, I know, know you know that, but most people don't. Okay. But my point, though, is that I usually refer to movies made not for children as adult movies, just because <laughs> most of the time I'm only watching movies made for children. And so it's like a special treat you when know, I'm watching a movie that actually say, has they say when you're a target in politics, audience. When you're explaining, you're losing. Yes, but so. I'm explaining because I have a legitimate reason for referring to all movies that are not. Featuring like a singing talking crab is like adult movies. I, that's just the phase of life that I'm in. Like when I when I when I'm like when we're like it's movie night, it's like time to watch something that's like rated PG or under. So oh. it feels like an adult movie when I watch something that's like made for adults. Well, okay, so let's talk about what we watched. And it was the thing we watched was definitely made for adults. Okay, we got to introduce it though. So we watched a movie called Red Rocket. I think it was released in 2021. Um, I don't have the data right in front of me. Okay, so we watched a movie. Okay, again, I think it would be interesting if we, um, you know, if you think about it, there could be a separate podcast, which would be like media content um, consumption review. Well, let's, I mean, yes, I do think that would be good, but let's, okay, let's start with what was the title of the film that we watched? The movie was called Red Rocket. All right, because, yeah, I, I, I almost couldn't remember that. But... Why was it called Red Rocket? They drove that red car around. It was that like called the Red Rocket? No, but I kind of imagined that maybe it was. Supposedly, like, it has some bad meaning online or something, but I forgot what it means, and it was like, it seemed like kind of a weird and random name from what I can remember. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's a really dark, really dark movie. I mean, it managed to also be funny, but it's actually super dark. I mean, it's, it's basically like this sexual predator that's like grooming his next victim. <laughs> but it's really but it's really well done because it's at, so at much the intro it is, but just let me let me let me I'm just setting the stage. Okay. So we all we all agree that he's a sexual predator grooming his next victim, yes. But the thing that's really good about it is that we get to see both the um we get to simultaneously see him grooming his next victim and see how badly things have turned out for possibly his original victim. Because he's just because as we enter the movie, he's come back into his ex-wife's life. And yeah. so basically, I think his ex-wife okay, is at what, a terribly what? low point is like a preview okay, to gotta, where he's taking we've his gotta, girl. We've gotta we've gotta establish some things. Pump here. the brakes a little bit. We gotta I I, I, I like where you're going. Pump, we, pump. I think one thing we've gotta be considerate of on the podcast is we can't talk about things we have to introduce everything before okay, we just, where, uh, can I just like be, ask if, this the, if the audience where, knows nothing about this we've got where to, do you think he was before he showed up well let's, I, let's I think describe he, what's happening so a guy shows where we, up where do we see okay. him okay. initially we enter, where he's in the movie with this guy showing up right on a bus he's on a bus he His has a black eye Mikey 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 shows up in Texas City Texas and it's like not a, it's, it's not a, like a nice neighborhood it's downtrodden, industrial. There's like a depressing. huge, is that like an oil refinery that you constantly see? There's fire in the shooting out of the smokestacks at the edge of town. And he shows up at the home of his ex mother in law and his ex wife. And he basically like needs no, a wife. not ex wife. Oh, they're still married. They're still they're, married. They they're haven't like, been, how been. How long? How long do you, do we suppose? It's been it years. years. A couple years. years yes, multiple it's been years. years. Multiple years. Not yes. six months. It's no. It's I, been I long enough that she had months. an entire baby. Longer. But they never. She had an entire baby that wasn't his, and had the baby long enough to like have it be with her for a while and be taken away by social services in the time that he's been gone. So I, however long that takes. But they never got divorced, and they're still married. Yes, but they never got divorced. Also, um, he has, like, he talks about, like, probably, like, three other victims that he's had in the meantime with, like, these other women that he's, like, brought into the corner. When do you say that? Right. Okay, so he, so well, he befriends, right, he so befriends back, so that we, guy. Just back, back up, because nobody back, knows back. what we're talking okay, we'll about at this point. Okay, this is a movie. Let's, the start of the movie is, and, and, and let's not forget the song that plays over and over. The song is super the, important. The song is so important to the movie. Yeah. You can't even understand. They play it backwards and forwards. It has new meanings every time. You know what I'm talking about. Bye, bye, bye. Oh, okay, bye. In sync. Okay, but that shows up at the beginning yes, of the movie. Yes, it's playing in the intro when he's on the bus with the black eye. And then it play like, in different forms, plays throughout yes. the movie. But so, okay, so he shows up, 
he basically begs his mother-in-law and wife to let him back in. Strange way. Whatever yeah. is whatever has happened before he got on the bus with the black eye. He's and obviously the like he's out. Yes. Him. He's been beaten up. He doesn't have a the car. Victim of an assault. He's, he he has nowhere to go basically. So he's trying to get back in with like a situation that had already like he, gone he's, bad. He's years a very ago. He, he, like, so he he's very sympathetic. At he's the at beginning. the end of his road. He's somewhat yeah. He's somewhat sympathetic because he's like begging to be let back in and he's like I'll contribute and like they're like okay you have to pay rent and like all this stuff and like they're making him sleep on the couch and they're making it uncomfortable like he's like on the couch but like the mother-in-law is still like watching her like shows like early in like, the morning time. yeah just like, like really stupid tv yeah but i mean his ex-wife and mother-in-law are like in really bad shape like they're they both appear to be unemployed although later we find out that his ex-wife is like um a prostitute although she's like maybe thinks that now she can like take a break from being a prostitute now that he's like going to be contributing to the rent so i mean we feel bad for her but like obviously her and the mother-in-law are not doing well they're like smoking crystal meth in the yard and he's yeah. like scolding them for it but i also feel that he's kind of like maybe to blame for them being in such a lowly point not entirely to blame well i, I you know i look at that setting where they live and you wonder what the what the good outcome is for anybody from that it's neighborhood not environment great. no it's, i mean it's, it's definitely the place I mean, it feels that way at least in the show that may be too negative of a take but well we know that he and the ex-wife or i'm going to call her the ex-wife because they're they're estranged he and yeah. the estranged wife got together when they were very young because he befriends and he befriends a neighbor mm -hmm. of of you know now that he's like back staying with his mother-in-law and wife he befriends a neighbor and the neighbor was a boy that is now grown up, but was somebody that his ex-wife used to babysit. And the neighbor does make reference to a time that the parents came home and found him and the ex-wife like hooking up. So we know that he and the ex-wife have maybe been, or he and the wife have maybe been together since they were like pretty young. Like I imagine she was like in high school or something, babysitting her neighbor, I and they were like together. So they got together I, young. I imagine the two of them were basically contemporaries. Yeah, I think they were like you know probably high school sweethearts. It, and that's away. exactly like they were they high school. The porn thing and, yeah. and you know yeah, yeah and, somebody and gets burned out on it first and it was her so. Well, and that's where we're, that's where we're going with this is that where we find out that where he is coming from on the bus is that he had been a porn star. Mm -hmm. Although I've heard that male porn stars don't get paid as well. The females, women get paid more. yeah but anyway he had been a porn star at some point he had been doing i guess pretty well he keeps referencing that he won some awards from like the porn AVN. whatever like the porn oscars are or whatever adult video whatever. yeah he's like very proud of these awards that he won even though people keep coming out that like maybe like he wasn't even like... but anyway um... <laughs> no the categories he won for are not even like he's like not the most active participant <laughs> yeah but um but anyway, so he simultaneously, like, weasels his way back into, like, the life of his wife and her, like, mother. And he sees this girl at, like, a donut shop and starts grooming her. Well, he's also selling to... weed. Yes, he's selling weed. Although that's sort of, like, you feel for him because he did try to I mean, apply what, for a bunch of jobs. He tried to do it the, the and right he had way. No, and, and he had no, out. like, actual, yeah. you know, he had no experience or skills. I mean, so so you do feel for him that, like, he did try to, like, get a legitimate job and then finally was like, look, I guess this is what I'm doing. But, okay, so he's sees this girl at the donut shop and starts grooming her to, like, get into a relationship with him, which he's then ultimately going to, like, spin into, like, getting her into porn. And we find out through his conversations with the neighbor that he's done this several times where he's found someone and like lured them into porn but then he's angry because every time they've eventually like left him and so now he's like luring this girl in because she he sees her as like his way back into porn is that like he's gonna like bring her into it but it's like it's so nasty and we can definitely see that like he obviously ruined his ex-wife's life. Like, she's now, like, destitute, like, crystal meth tweaker. Like, this is obviously what's going to happen to this girl, too. And so it, it's so gross. But also really well done and interesting. Yes. Yeah, it's a, uh, I, you know, it, I, I think, like, the movie is just so smart, though, because, like, you really start off, you're kind of on his side, and he seems like he's helping, and he, you know, he's, he does, he's like, he's, very like, mowing charming. the lawn, and he's, like, trying to, like, 
he's like encouraging them to like stop smoking crystal meth in the yard and you know <laughs> yeah great life choice yeah yeah no he's like scolding them for like that and like but yeah no it seems like he's like maybe it could be positive that he's back in these people's lives but i mean he's really just pretending to be back into their lives until he can like get this other plan going where he like lures this girl to like go away with him yeah it and it I don't know. It's an interesting thing. Like, uh, you know, there's questions about agency and stuff in there as far as like, you know, I don't know. Like who, whose agency are we questioning? Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I think like his, his wife, his estranged wife, and also the, the younger woman that he's he's hitting on or whatever at the donut shop. I so. don't think there's any question about her agency. I mean, she's, she's 17. She's 17. He's a sexual predator. Yeah. He is... He is Lying to her as he grooms her into a relationship because he originally he's told he originally, tell about where he's being dropped off. Okay, so first of all, I mean, it, not even the okay, so he's lying to her about the fact that like he has money. First of all, because like he he's riding a bike, like, he doesn't even have a car, and but like he's his wife's bike somehow can, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he definitely is, like, a bike. even his bike but, is borrowed. But he's like convinced her, like he's told her that he's just in town to help his ailing mother, and and whenever she gives him a ride, he has her drop him off in front of this really nice house that he claims that he bought with like his like porn money. For his mom. So, like, she thinks that he has, like, money and, like, a nice life and is, like, a good guy who's, like, taking care of his mom. Even beyond that, he's lying to her about the fact that, I mean, he's, like, a classic, like, it's exactly like what you would do if you were, like, a pimp that's gonna, like, turn your girlfriend out onto, like, the streets. Like, first he's, like, just, like, wants to be her boyfriend, and then he's, like, you know, you would be so great in porn, and she's, like, oh, I don't want to do it, I just like and being with you. And now we're filming a porn. Now we're, but even before that, it's, like, she's, like, I just like being with Sorry, you. Sorry, spoiler alert. Okay. She's, okay. like, I just Are like. Are you really surprised? <laughs> listener, she's, like, I just really like being surprised? with you, and he's, like, oh, no, you'll only have to be with me, mm-hmm. because we'll just mm-hmm. do, like, couples work or whatever. Meanwhile, to his friend, he's, like, talking about how she clearly Longford. would be. Can yeah. we talk about Longford? But, but, but let me finish this thought, though. Like, so, so while he's telling her, like, oh, we'll just do couples work, to his friend, he's, like, talking about how he clearly, like, sees the signs that she would be interested in, okay. like, going with one, more than one person at the same time. Okay. Well, what? Okay. So, I mean, he's what totally we, lying we, to her. Okay, like, what, and, we, what do we think she wants? I mean, she wants excitement. She's 17. She wants to escape from, like, like, as you mentioned, I believe, this there's, like, is there's, like, the, the only jobs seem to be the, like, people Donut that work at, like, the the scary, like, flames, area, like, oil yeah. refinery where they're, like, literally fire shooting into the sky. Like, she wants to escape, and he's offering to take her away to L.A. That seems super glamorous. He's, like, older, and so seems probably more, you know, together than, like, her high school boyfriend, who's just, like, a high school dweeb. As he himself points out, he's like, oh, she doesn't have a dad, because he knows that he can take advantage of that and, like, be like, oh, the older guy that's, like, paying her the attention. Yeah. Which is exactly what all of these sexual predators do. They find somebody well, that, like, yeah. you know, they find somebody with a weakness and exploit it for, like, their own, like, usage. Yeah. It, I think it's interesting, though, in the context, they, they did say in the, in the show that 17 was legal in Texas. So I see. Even I, though, I think how much was, do we even trust okay. that okay. assessment? I don't necessarily think that's true. We're not going to look this up because this is Dude, like, we don't want I'm to be on the Wi Fi or whatever. No. But, like, no. okay, okay. But no, no. I don't. Okay, on, even if 17 is legal, okay. that doesn't make it not nasty. I'm going to take, take the hit here. I'm going to, okay, what is the age of consent in Texas? Even if 17 is legal. Oh, I it's know, it's nasty. still wrong. She's also, still in high school. I get, yeah. Also, okay. Okay, also Texas, here we go. Texas Penal Code states that once a person becomes 17 years of age, they are capable to give consent for sexual activity with another person. So, how do they say it in the movie? Legally in how do they say it in the movie? I don't know. I don't remember. Legal as an eagle. Oh, is that what he said? It sounds like a, <laughs> yeah. sounds like a uh, you know, a better call Saul moment. Or Let me just introduce the movie a little more. This is, again, Red Rocket, which was directed by, um, oh, God. On uh, Sean Baker, and he also did, and I think it's worth mentioning. Unfortunately, we haven't all seen it, but um, the Florida Project, mm-hmm. uh, which is another movie he did, which was also another movie that is set in a very, you know, a world where you don't always like the choices that the people make are not always the best choices, um, but you can kind of like understand their lifestyles or whatever, and you can kind of like see the, the the situation that they're in. 
I, I would recommend that movie. I haven't seen any of his other movies, but it's a movie by Sean Baker, starring Simon Rex as Mikey Saber, um, and Susanna Son as Strawberry, and uh, Brie Elrod as Lexi Dave, David Davies. And now you said That's that some wife. of the, like a, a few of the actors in this were people that hadn't previously been in any sort of acting room. Okay, the, the woman Brenda D Dice, I believe, is Lil, who plays the stepmother. Um, and from what I understand, unfortunately, she passed away after the movie came mm -hmm. out. Unfortunately, um, she did a really good job. But and I oh, think she was, she was, she was first, perfect. Like she I think the director perfect. calls them first-time actors, not non-professional actors. But yeah, and Brittany Rodriguez plays June, the daughter of the gang, of the drug dealer who kind of like is the enforcer ah. of that operation, basically. And I think she was also another first-time actor. And Ethan Ethan Darbone was mm -hmm. the one who played Lonnie Lonifer. Yeah, no, that, that was. That and was I, I, I'm not sure if he's a first time actor or if he's actually an established actor. He did a, I thought he did a fantastic job. The casting of this, I mean, this reminded me a lot of like a, um, like kids or like any of those. Type I of never like watched projects. kids. I have downloaded kids, but I never watched it because. You should watch it. it I don't know. I just feel like it's going to be too, like, I don't know. Or like, what is that one about the town where the tornado comes? Gummo? Yes. Oh, yeah. That I is, saw that. Yeah, no, it reminded me a lot of that, too. Yeah, I've watched it back Spring in Breakers. Spring Breakers. Although Spring Breakers was, like, too much production value. I thought there were some brilliant moments in Spring Breakers, though. There was also, also like, a weird piano playing scene, just like in the that movie. Was, that was, the, that was yes. the highlight of the movie for me. Oh, no, that was great. I'm just saying that that's, like, a very close parallel to this. Like, I almost think this had to be, like, inspired by that. Like, I, we're playing the Britney song on the piano. At the, remember yeah. when Strawberry plays Harmony, the... Harmony, Harmony Corinne. Yeah. Yeah, the director. Yeah, when Strawberry plays that Larry song Clark, on the by piano. By Larry was, Clark? I, yeah, I exactly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. Um, I thought that Strawberry's version of Bye 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 was not that great, actually. But it was the I, kind of version that like a high school student would come up with. <laughs> it was. It definitely was. I, so I, it's like I'm so deep because I'm playing this in like a different like, like a, a though it's like yeah yeah. I don't know. It's it's just like when Tori Amos played it smells like Teen Spirit. It's like a very like the whole like Visco girl like tisk 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 like I feel like and then suddenly you're just playing the piano and you're like. Doing some deep cuts on like some old like boy band music, mm -hmm. and it's like those boy band things. Like to oh, to us, those seem contemporary, but to like Strawberry's generation, that's like a vintage Practically song. Practically an oldie. Yeah. yeah, no, exactly. Like that's like to us, that's like the same as doing like a Bob Dylan like deep <laughs> cut. Yeah. <laughs> like as tragic as that that's sounds. So depressing. <laughs> you know? yeah. It's true though. The decline of culture continues unabated. <laughs> Although I watched a YouTube documentary about the boy bands and stuff, like, and it was kind of you know. It's pretty wild. This they were being run by this one guy who was kind of like an I don't know, a rich impresario who seemed to like the young performers or whatever, the male performers especially or something and stuff, but like and he didn't really give them a lot of money sometimes. He didn't like they had sold like a million records and he gave them ten thousand dollars each Ouch. at a dinner and they were all expecting like, Oh my god, you know, how many <laughs> hundreds of thousands are we right? gonna get? And so like it's really interesting, kinda like this music that has uh you know, to some degree, defined a generation was actually kind of like in, produced by this um, this kind of guy who was on the take a little bit, kind of taking advantage of these people oh, yeah. to to make these There's and you know making In Sync and then making the Backstreet Boys or, or making the Backstreet Boys and making In Sync. I forget what the order was. I think kind of Backstreet like definitely them in, came first. Okay, was that that was the situation? I feel strongly that this is true. And of course, there's 98 Degrees who doesn't want to be forgotten in the mix, well, although they had no memorable songs. Did they, can you name me one 98 Degrees song right now? No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, maybe. Um, maybe. When the lights go out? Was sing that, it, sing you're, it. You tell like you're making that up. <laughs> That's not a real I'm song. Gonna pull out, I'm going to pull out, I'm going to pull out, I'm not going to sing anything, I'm a horrible <laughs> singer, but I'm going to pull out. What did you yeah, say? Yeah, but you can't play it, you can't no, play it you on say? the, you can't play it on the podcast because then we'll be like copyright stricken. Good, like, I want this part struck in. Hey, no, <laughs> no, 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 just, just sing a few bars. Oh God, you no, can no. do this. Oh wait, hold on. Wait, was it not? Hold on. Was it then? I'm pretty sure it was no, not. That's not a real song. You made this up. No, I swear to God. Uh, Sing. I until I hear some <laughs> some part of this. I don't. I don't believe it's real. Okay, was it five? It was five. What? Five. What? The band was named Five. 
Okay, I'm, but what is 98 degrees? I'm though? still waiting to hear okay, what 98 maybe I, degrees I, is. Maybe I don't know what 98 degrees Can you look up what 98 degrees is? All I think of when I think of 98 degrees is Nick Lachey wearing like suspenders and like... Oh, I do remember this song. This is not 98 degrees though. Apparently it's called Five. No wonder I forgot that name. Was this like a British boy band or something? No, I but I, this, song, this sound, song is very familiar. Mm. So I'm not going to say anything else interesting until you stop playing. So. <laughs> this is all going to happen. Pretty... Too bad they didn't have more hits, but... Is it? <laughs> what else did they have to give us? <laughs> I think they gave all the <laughs> Although I think this song got some play. It did. I strangely remember this. Anyways. Okay, but you can't name a 98 degrees song. Okay, all you can think of. That. that was. I thought that was 98 degrees. All, it wasn't. I all, don't know. I don't know 98 degrees. All That's I true. can think of when I think of 98 degrees is just Nick Lachey wearing suspenders, but like not a shirt, and being like all greased up and like trying to like be married to Jessica Simpson, but then they're like fighting, and then they have that TV show, but then they have to get a divorce, and the show is also canceled. And, every, and everyone's like, oh my god, she said chicken of the sea it was chicken or something? Because she didn't know that it was like a fish or something, and then people were like, especially mm -hmm. upset about that. Yeah. Although she still went on to, I think, have more success than Nick Lachey. Actually not, though, because we've been watching that show where Nick Lachey and his new wife are like the host. Uh, you should tell Jonathan, I don't think okay. he's seen that show. So... All right, just 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 like just leave, just leave she's her. having like a crisis of like once more an existential like okay. traveling crisis. But tell but okay, so, tell Jonathan about this dating so show. I was saying like oh yeah no Jessica Simpson's had more success than Nick Lachey, but then I remembered that Rob and I have recently watched not one but two shows hosted by Nick Lachey. Show. <laughs> I mean so have I, but we still watched like a couple episodes. Was... A show hosted by Nick Lachey and his current and I think longtime wife. Vanessa Lachey? Yeah, okay. that sounds Possibly right. Vanessa. Sounds right. Sounds Vanessa a lot like Jessica, Lachey. but I'm pretty sure it's really her name. Hmm. Anyway, the first show we watched was a show where... What was it, Love is Blind? Yes, yeah, so basically, you're, it's, a, it's a dating show, which we don't even normally watch like that many reality shows like this. This just like sucked us in. There was a void in like our watching schedule, and just you know when something just hits at the right moment where you just find yourself watching it? So okay. I'm making excuses. Mm -hmm. But anyway... Basically, you go into this pod, and then you can, t and then you have a series of like blind dates, where somebody else is in another pod, so you can't see them, and then you can't see the person you're dating. Like you date multiple people, and then finally you can't see anyone until ones. you propose. And then once you've proposed, you get to like meet. The you don't get to meet until time. after you propose. That's marriage. That's. That's pretty heavy. Yeah, it's it's super heavy. It's a terrible experiment. Like it's destined to fail. I feel it's like just like it's not a workable plan. Some people the, are still together, aren't they? The human animal is too complicated, I think, to. But these uh, are people that trust. have been on all the apps, and they're like, "I'm desperate." They're like, "I'm desperate. I think I could just, based on someone's voice, on the hope apps. that they're it's, like hot." Uh, not always pretty. But then the the second show that they hosted was even worse it was the way second worse. show way we, we gave because we we okay. like binge watched the pod show because it was like strangely watchable the second show though was called <laughs> ultimatum so in ultimatum it's a group of people it's a group of couples like maybe like seven couples or something yeah and they've all reached a point where one of them is like we are going to either have to get married or break up hmm. so then you go on the show as a couple where you live in this hotel with the other couples that are also like we have to get married or break up and for a week you kind of go on these like group dates with the other couples and then at the end of the week you're supposed to pair off with like somebody else from like a different couple and then you go to like a dis i think you're supposed to then go to a separate location and then you live like in like maybe like an airbnb type of situation where you basically like pretend that you're a couple with this other person who has a separate ultimatum going with someone else and then after several weeks of doing that you're supposed to come back to your original partner and then decide if you're actually marrying your original partner or possibly going with someone else two or questions. breaking up. Okay, two questions. Uh, have you guys watched all of Black Mirror? No. Because there's an episode of Black Mirror that's kind of like, like that. You, well, I, I can't describe it, but there, let's just say there's an episode, I can't remember the name of the episode, but there is an episode of Black Mirror where you you go on every permutation of like who you could date or something in an instant. Like the dating app like 
processes every single possibility or something in a virtual reality setting that your character goes through. But then, like, I don't know. It's it's a weird one. But on the other hand, I just I'm just also recalling. I'd like to recall that we were also talking. We started with Red Rocket. I don't know if we're sticking with Red we, Rocket. We can go or... back to Red Rocket. There's so much to say about Nick Lachey and about dating and about boy bands. But if we ratchet is back it, past there, all, there's, there's there's always more to say about those topics. But if we ratchet back past all mm -hmm. those things back to Red Rocket, I think we had more to say about that, didn't we? Okay. Well, are you done talking about Nick Lachey? We'll just never be well, done talking about Nick Lachey oh as long as he keeps hosting these terrible shows. Did, did you guys watch, like, it's like that, um, you know, Don't Look Up? No. In Don't Look Up, there's this guy, um, I forget what his name is. He's a movie director, but he, I think he's kind of notorious. But, no, I know I know, I know, know what you're talking he, about. I just, I don't he hosts a morning out. show. It's like it's he used to be a sports person, but then he starts host, hosting a morning show. And it's just like, yeah, it's kind of like Nick Lachey. It's like, I know you as something different than a morning show host. But now I think Nick Lachey, yeah. though, is like, I, he has become just a professional celebrity. You know what I mean? Like, he has albums of, like, random children's music, and he's, like, hosting all these different shows. And, like, I would not be shocked if he tried to, like, come out with, like, some sort of, like, you know, homewares. Like, if he's, like... I mean, I guess Jessica Simpson's making clothes, so maybe he won't do that, but like, if he came out with like, a line of like, bathroom fixtures or something, it wouldn't be that shocking. You know, like, that's just like, I think he's like the kind of person that like, he bought the large size mansion with the large size jacuzzi and he needs to keep like, raking in a certain amount of money to like, maintain the lifestyle that he's very used to. Mm. And I mean, no shade on that, like he's making it work and he looks super weird as he's aging, like he's clearly having a lot of work done, but like, that's fine, that's like what he wants to do. Mm. I remember there, there was like a reality show that had him and his wife or something on it, but... Yeah, no, that's what we're talking about with like the Jessica Simpson, like the chicken okay, and, and like all that. Yeah, that was like so long ago, but it's like since then he's just continued to be a professional celebrity. Hmm. Like it's just like, but these shows that he's hosting are just appalling. Like it's like so, so, so awkward. Hmm. Well... But going back to the idea of boy bands in general, because like we were, I think we got into this because we were saying that 98 Degrees is, is like, it's the band you always think of third after you think of NSYNC and Backstreet Boys, and it's clearly lesser because like, I mean, you couldn't even remember like a single song that they did, and neither could any of us. Hmm. Um, but I mean, obviously NSYNC and Backstreet Boys like reigned supreme for so long. Yeah, but at the same time, they were basically being like massively underpaid and scammed kind of by their business manager who was you know, running like a gazillion scams, but... But, I mean, Justin Timberlake has, like, managed to be very successful since then. Okay. But I want to wrestle it back. Like I, like I said, I didn't love Sun Strawberry's um, rendition of Bye Bye Bye, mm -hmm. but I loved it at the end of the movie when they played the song backwards, and I was just like... That was that was very cool. Like, I, mean, I mean, spoiler alert, but... I mean, I, I enjoyed just hearing it in different ways throughout the whole movie, like Rob was saying. Like, that, that was fun. Yeah. This but... Is... I felt like, though, um, we argued a little bit about, I mean, I guess we don't want to say too much about, do you, do you really want that much crackling on here? <laughs> no, no, thank you. Um, we argued about the ending. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know, like, I'm just going to shout spoiler alert, so if anyone wants to see this and doesn't want to know how it ends, they can just not listen. But I do think we should talk about it, because I think it's very clear that the mm -hmm. ending is a fantasy. Because okay. he's like, he's failed in what he was trying to do, and he's fantasizing in the end about if it had worked. And, at the, and to me, that was like super clear, but you were like, thought maybe it was vague, like, he, did this happen or not? It was going into some sort of a fantasy. I mean, because, okay, she answers the door, and she supposedly, this is supposedly like he's picking her up so that they can leave town together. There's no way she would just be wearing a red bikini. Like, she would definitely, like, if she was actually thought she was, like, leaving town, she would definitely be wearing clothes. Yeah. Like, first of all. And, like, second of all, like, when she sees that he's standing, like, he promised that he was going to, like, bring a car to pick her up. When she sees that he's standing there with, like, a garbage bag slung over his shoulder and, like, he, like, clearly had to, like, walk there, she's not going to be excited to, like, come to the door. Like, that's, like, that's a no. So that's like clearly reads as like completely false. Like he's like I don't even think he like goes back for her. Hmm. I think he just like I think at the point when he has no money and like the whole thing's running to ground. He, he probably well, just he leaves had town. 
$200 is like enough for him to maybe go to another town and start grooming a new victim. It's not enough to actually leave town with her and keep stringing her along long enough to like worm his way back. That's my the thing point. is that even if he gets her to go with her temporarily, he's not going to be able to keep her for well, very long. And the plan that he had discussed with the neighbor is that he's going to like, you know, he's going to get like some housing for them. He's going to convince her to do the couple's work. Then he's going to be like, but wouldn't it be cool if we just had this one other person or, oh, they really want us to do this, please, blah, 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 whatever. Oh, you know, he's gonna, he, his plan is to roll this out. Like he knows it's not going to work to just be like, surprise, we're homeless. And let's, you know, let's jump right into this. Like, that's not going to work. And he even knows that. Like, he's not a super smart guy, but, like, he does know how to, like, manipulate, like, a young, impressionable teen into, like, the porn industry. Like, that's something he's done successfully, by his account, several times. Well, I think, like, I think he talks about his, his ex or his wife, his estranged wife. I think he talks about doing scenes with some other people and, like, so on and so forth. I don't know that he brought other people into the industry. I'm oh, not sure. But he I, says that he did. Whether that's a lie or not, we don't know. He says he, when he's talking to the neighbor, mm -hmm. he mentions like two or three different actresses, and he's like bitter about how, like, mm -hmm. it's like I got her into this and I made her who she was, and we were together for X amount of time, but then she got a big head and left me. Like, his, his whole complaint is that he makes these actresses. And then they leave him, and he's like bitter about it because he he sees himself as like the victim that these like people that he like made into stars and then like moved on from him. But it's like of course like he's like an unreliable narrator. But I do believe that he yeah you're probably I, I do right believe he that. drew these women into this. They probably left him because they realized that he's like a piece of shit, <laughs> you know, or they got better opportunities, or like his ex-wife or his you know estranged wife. They probably just like ran to ground and like became like a crystal meth tweaker or whatever because they were like used up. Like either way, it's like he's like done this several times. Yeah. And that's why he like immediately like recognizes and latches on to the it's not like it just like randomly occurred to him when he sees Strawberry at the donut shop that he could like do this. I think he sees her and he just like recognizes that she would look good on film and like he sees it as like an opportunity. Yeah. It's a it's a weird now well they I mean from what I understand, the director consulted with some actual porn stars about this kind of guy. Well, and wasn't and about that, the, wasn't and about the, how they got into the industry as well. Well, and the and actor like, though, he he's an actual adult film star, correct? He he has starred in several adult I, films earlier in his career. He was also an MTV VJ before or after the adult films. Uh, after. Okay. I think. Yeah. No, apparently he was and dating. a rapper. He was dating Paris Hilton for a time. Oh God, was he? I didn't realize nope. that. No, I cut that out. That's not true. <laughs> well, that might no. be true. I saw an interview. With his him one did you time. say his name was Dirt Nasty? Well, that's his rapping name. But is that is that not his porn name also? No. Well, he he wasn't really in the like. Apparently, he made a couple of videos like very early, like when he was eighteen. He was dating like a twenty-seven year old stripper or something, who did, also did films and stuff, and they didn't have enough money or something, and so he he did this to make some money for her kid or something at the time. Uh, he, he told this whole story it's somewhere else on some very like, convenient story. Well, I mean, there's, a, there's always a, there's always a story it's, about it's, why anyone does anything. Sure, but I think it's, I mean, it's, <laughs> I it's mean, and you don't believe any of them. I'm not saying I don't believe them. I'm just saying there's always a story. Everyone has some reason or motivation for why they're doing it. Well, I think the thing is, I think the porn star that they talked to like said something about the agency of Strawberry. They, they said that that was an important thing to emphasize was that she was using some agency in this scenario too. So he's definitely like doing wrong and legally in Texas he may not be doing wrong but like in most states that would be absolutely considered wrong like you know. I mean she has agency in the sense that she is like it's not like he has kidnapped her but I mean he's I, a sexual predator and she's like a victim that he's like slowly grooming methodically from a position of being like older than her and being able to take advantage of the fact that she's yeah, in this I, awful town no, and like wants to escape. I don't disagree, but I think like I think the point is that she is using him to some degree as a way to get out of this town, which of course, which I and I don't know like you know you look at like a guy like Lonifer who stayed, or you look at them when they stayed, or you look at you know um, the woman that they buy the drugs from in the in the movie and everything. I mean, yeah, you can, you know, you can totally see why she imagines a better future well, no. escaping from this. No, town. no, I'm saying that, that that's a person who seems to have established a sense of family and 
has a communal responsibility to her neighbors, Lil and the daughter. Yeah. And she seems to be someone who has been able to, and you know, don't sell to the people working at the gas plant because their managers are really strict or something. I mean, she seems like a person who is like a, a fiber of that community that is, you know, holding people together, holding her family together, and and so on and so forth. So, but you know, it's a hard scrabble existence, I would say, even in a situation where you do successfully be able to um, right. create that that scenario. I felt like though, but, but I don't see that happening for Strawberry necessarily. So, no, whether, but, if she wants to get out, that may be legitimate. Using somebody else to get out may be legitimate, but obviously it's wrong that he's doing this, and so on and so forth. So, but I, I think that that was something that they stressed was that her agency was an important consideration in this in getting into this kind of lifestyle or something. I feel like something interesting that's like a slight shift from like talking about like um, him and Strawberry is. There are a lot of really interesting, like, parental relationships in this. Okay. Because we've got, okay, we've got the mother-in-law and the estranged wife that are, like, they, like, live together and they have, like, their dynamic. Then we have, there's the drug dealer and, like, her daughter who's, like, kind of, like, the muscle of, like, the operation. We've got Ronifer, the next-door neighbor, and his dad... <laughs> Who's just like always like out in the lawn, like staring. <laughs> and then we have the most bizarre thing, though. I think the most bizarre scene to me, like just unexpected, was when um, so when when Mikey gets strawberries, like when when she gets strawberry to break up with her high school boyfriend, and then he and his parents show up. <laughs> And, like, his parents are wearing weirdly wearing, wearing matching outfits, and, like, his parents are there to, like, beat the shit out of Mikey. It's, like, in what scenario is, like, you, your kid's in high school, and he's, like, oh, you guys, this, this guy, like, stole my girlfriend, and I'm so sad, and they're, like, we're gonna put on matching outfits, we're gonna drive to where this guy is, and we're gonna, like, beat the shit out of him in a parking lot. Like, that, to me, was, like, so incredibly bizarre. Okay. Like, right? Like, can you imagine a scenario where your parents... Not only beat someone up because they are now dating the person that like broke up with you, but also wear matching outfits to like go do it. Yeah, it's it's outside of the realm of what's possible <laughs> in, my, in my family. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Like to me, I never would have like imagined that could possibly be possible. Okay, I've got a couple of other questions about movies though. Have you guys seen American Honey? No. No. Okay, that that should be on the list. And also, I do think the Florida Project should be on the list by this guy. American Honey is not directed by this guy, but it's an interesting movie about you know people living a lifestyle that's a little bit outside of you know what we do. These these people, these young people, go on this like magazine selling cross country road trip together as a as a group, like working for one person. It's kind of like this uh, terrible business model, but they just go totally buck wild while they're out there. Unfortunately, as Shia LaBeouf, I don't like that guy. Not a fan. No. But this movie is pretty good, though. It's I, it's, it's another on. weird one where like people are just kind of like like out there living like the Lost Boys or something on Peter Pan, just going around listening to crazy loud music, rapping with each other, like you know, doing all kinds of bad things and basically selling magazines to keep the party going. And there's like this one woman who's in charge of everything and she's really strict and everything, but they like, they work hard and they play hard and everything, but it's just this very non-traditional life. And yet it is this uh, way of life that actually exists of people who just travel, young people traveling around the United States, selling magazines, city to city, state to state. Like, How much community. money can you actually make selling magazines? I don't think that they make a lot, but it's like... like enough to even like be alive at all? They, I mean, it's it's enough that it's kind of like a self-perpetuating, you know, thing or something. But this one girl kind of falls for Shia LaBeouf and, like, runs away from a bad family situation and joins this kind of band, and she just goes on this, like, crazy, um, <coughs> kind of like an epic journey almost. Um, it's, an, it's a very interesting and strange and disturbing and kind of beautiful movie at times, So, but also, like, really wacky. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned Peter Pan because um, I recently read a book that was like like a like I guess like a re not not exactly a retelling like a retelling slash sequel of Peter Pan and like the book itself wasn't very good, but it did get me thinking about like whether I should read Peter Pan to the kids. But like I've realized that's not going to work. Why not? Just, like there's there's too much incredibly offensive material. That just with like the just the Indians and like the racism oh, yeah. and just. 
it, and, and sometimes you can kind of gloss over bits and pieces or like explain them to the kids, but I feel like there's just too much there. Like there's too much that I would have to like explain or cut out or like it's just like it's not happening. Like I, I was thinking like can I make this work, but it's like not cancel work. culture strikes again. But the book that I read <laughs> was interesting. I mean, the book itself actually ended up being pretty awful. Okay. But the thing that was interesting never, about it was read, that I never read Peter Pan. It was like if Peter Pan was like a rapist. What? But it, it, no, but it, it actually made a lot of sense to me. Like the concept. What's the name of the book? Uh, Darling Girl, because Darling is like the last name of the children in the original Peter Pan story. And in the world of this story, it's about like the generations of the Darling family post Peter Pan. Because in the world of this story, the Darling, the children in the original Peter Pan story are real, and so it's this is like about them and like their progeny. So it's like several generations of the people like post this book. But it's like Peter Pan is like so creepy and that made sense to me because I've always thought there was something like uncomfortably sexual about Peter Pan. Hmm. Okay. Like I remember, okay, so there was a version of Peter Pan that came out like, I don't know, maybe 10, 15, more than 10 years ago. When I was maybe in college or something that I remember going to see with like my sister and my stepdad. And I remember feeling like very uncomfortable, like, like, you know that very uncomfortableness when it's, like, just if? Mm hmm Like, just something about the way, like, the way that the, like, gaze of the camera was, like, looking at Peter Pan was, like, uncomfortable. But this is more the opposite of that, because this is more like Peter Pan is, like, a sexual predator. That's but, I mean, the book ended up, the book ended up kind of collapsing in upon itself like a dying star, so it, like, wasn't very good. But, like, I did think the premise had some potential. But I, I think the interesting thing is you go from being sympathetic and superficially charmed by this guy at the beginning part, like the first half or whatever of the movie. Yeah, even I mean, at first he's like, he seems like he's like, he's mowing the lawn, even though he's, you know, resorting to illegal things, he is like paying the rent and like... He's 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 doing some good. He's and, like taking them out for donuts, of course that kind of leads the movie to take like a bad turn, but like for a moment but, there, and, and it was that, like... that whole thing, like when he's like, you know what? I'm not paying part of the rent. And she's like, well, get the hell out. And he's like, well, I'm paying all the rent this month. And they're like, oh, okay, now we're yeah, talking. And then suddenly and then, they love him. Like, they're And then like, he's like, and come on tonight, let's go get donuts. It's on me. You can get whatever coffee. And she's like, oh, I'll get a small coffee. He's like, get a large coffee. It doesn't matter. He's like, oh, get one, get more sprinkles on your donuts. Yeah, and like, one, yeah he's just like being very like, I don't know if fastidious is the right word, but he's just like, he's, t he's looking after them so much, but he's making such a big show out of how well he's taken care of them. That's because he's done a terrible job of taking care of them previously. I know. It's, it's a certain type of person that like occasionally makes this big display to try to compensate for the fact that the rest of the time they're just like a total, like nothing. Yeah, it's... But it's working, like remember, I felt so bad for the, the mother-in-law when she like, is like almost like crying and saying how like, now that he's like staying around, like the daughter doesn't have to turn tricks anymore, like... Yeah, that and she's so like, are, that and she's so like are you staying or are you going to go? If you're going to stay, you can stay. Uh, if you're going to go, you know, don't let the door hit you. He's like, no, I'm in. But, you know, but, you but can he's tell already he doesn't working win. on his way out. So yeah. it's just like, oh. Yeah. But, like, this is like the thing, like, we talked about character in movies. These are characters, like, a lot of times in a movie, you have a character, the main character. The main character has to be good. They have to have some flaws, but those flaws have to be understandable and excusable. This movie throws that all out with no, the, I mean, the baby out with the bathwater. They're like, yeah. no, this is these are flawed, deeply flawed characters, but they are distinctly human. Oh yeah, I mean, and the even things when that you they know do, he's terrible, you're with him. Like you're, they're like, you're waiting. Like I felt bad for him even when he's being like beaten and like his money's being taken. And it's he all wasn't really beaten, like, but he was physically intimidated and he was naked in the bed because he liked to sleep. Like, <laughs> If only he thought to. And then he's running down the street naked while, while Bye 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 starts blasting. And it's just like, yeah. It's, um, I mean, that movie, it's like, a, it's, it's, a, it's an outstanding piece of cinema, I would say. It does actually, since, ever since we brought up Spring Breakers, it, it does actually remind me a lot of Spring, Spring Breakers. Break. Spring Break. I mean, just with like the piano and the general light like, ratchet vibe. And, and the the reference to the you know late '90s, early 2000s exactly. pop superstars exactly. as yes. like, and treating them though almost as if their music was you know culturally relevant and exactly. elevated exactly. and high art rather than kind of like the low art that we perceived it as at the time. You know, Britney Spears is what was that every time? 
was mm -hmm. that the song that they did? And that, mm -hmm. I was like, this was like a kind of an underappreciated song. But when you hear that movie, you're like, oh wow, this song is like kind of deep. Person, mm -hmm. dare I say it? You know? I mean, some people, of course, have like read so much into Britney's music, you know, about like the messages she's sending about her like imprisonment and everything. Now that she's finally free, she can she can be free to, I guess, not make any more music. That's fine. Although, I mean, I will admit, if she like started touring again, I would totally go. <laughs> How fun would that be? Would she would be. give a good show. Sure. The question I have is like, why is Britney getting a conservatorship, and like, okay, for example, Jared Leto. Why doesn't he doesn't have a co conservatorship? Just I mean, Bieber, I haven't followed. Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Shia yeah. LaBeouf. Because they're men. I know. Yes. Yeah. Will Smith. I'm just yeah. throwing it out there. I mean, I think. I mean, I think. I mean, I think the I've already answered that question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a it's a sad answer, but I'm just saying like. It's true though. I mean, yeah, but like Britney Spears was like the number one star in America. For but she time. was still able to be like easily overpowered. Yeah. Well, she grew up in that whole Disney thing. And that's another thing. Yeah. She, you know, everyone from that has just like completely imploded, though, right? I mean, more well, not just Justin J. Tim's. True. Okay, every woman from that has completely yeah. imploded. Yeah. I mean, you have seen Sorry. what's happened to Miley Cyrus, have we not? She wasn't on that. She wasn't on Disney, but she's basically. Might as well have been. I, mean, I like that, that song, Party in the USA. Oh, so do I. I like Wrecking Ball. Well, there's a really good classical version of that from the Bridgerton soundtrack that I like. I've been watching Bridgerton. I doubt it. No, I'm like, I don't, I don't there's, no reason, there's no reason you would watch that. <laughs> that's, that's not taint my I'm trying to imagine you. the scenario where somehow this has happened to you. Um, okay, I watched, um, I, we're getting a little off here, but do we want to, I, I don't know, do we want to wrap up this part? Or Did you want to move on to talking about Disney movies? Well, no, I was going to talk about Succession. But I don't know anything about Succession. Yeah. Yeah, Let's talk about Disney movies. Yeah. Let's do, because we did, we had things to say because we've watched you, I'm particularly curious like, about your thoughts about Disney well, movies as a I've watched so many Disney single non-parent. Yeah, for you this was like a new this experience. Was a new experience but this for weekend you. we watched Disney movies from several different periods. Not not intentionally. We didn't plan it out. It kind of happened that way. We watched Jungle Book. We watched Little Mermaid, and we watched um, Encanto. Yeah, really. That's like sixties, eighties, and just like right now, contemporary. Know? Yeah, I don't know. I think like. I think, I think uh, Blue Mermaid was every bit as good as I interpreted it to be as a kid. Of course, yeah. I would say that. That may be the nostalgia talking. But I, mean, I that's, would say that's a good sign. It holds up because there's things that you think you liked as a kid, and then you see them, and you're like, oh. Yeah, I would say that the uh, Encanto. I found like I find the modern animated movies. And I found this also. We could talk about because I think you guys had a different reaction to Boss Baby or whatever. I, I showed it a couple of years ago. I was grading papers while teaching children or whatever, and they were just kind of like watching Boss Baby. And so I saw it like, you know, three times per day, 45 That's minutes wild. at a time. And then after three days after I was finished grading, I'd seen the whole movie basically <laughs> three times separately. Um, so it was very disjointed. But, but I, I felt like, okay, this movie is well made. It's engaging. It's constantly engaging. It's like a joke every... 8 to 15 seconds, basically, or something happens that you react to every 8 to 15 seconds. But that it's, wasn't it's, our problem with it. Okay, well, <laughs> but my point is, with these modern with these modern animated movies, I feel like that they're, you know, they're overproduced and made by a committee to the point that they are, like, they're micromanaged to within an inch of their life. And they're so, like, com completely engaging that you just, like, you almost, I don't know, but it's, to like, I when mean, when you watch the Jungle Book, it's slow, mm -hmm. it's steady. The scenes take some time to build, but you kind of know what's happening. This other thing is just like it's from one thing to another, just randomly almost. I do think that they think, I mean, people's attention spans. They they don't trust that people have the attention span to watch unless there's like constantly like something happening. That's definitely true. But I mean, but to just as a side note, our boss baby, our issue with it wasn't that we didn't like it like personally or think it was entertaining. It's just as parents, you you have to look out for things that like your kids are going to latch on to that are going to like create like negative behaviors. And, like okay. if you don't want to hear your kid talking like the characters in Boss Baby, mm -hmm. then you need them to like not watch it. Okay. And that's like something you don't you, you may even as a parent not think of that until it's too late. Like, you know, you, okay. you watch something and then the next day you hear your kid talking and that's when you're like, okay, well we're never watching that again. 
<laughs> you know, so it's not so much like say hello to my little friend. <laughs> yeah, so it's, and it's things like that that might be funny if it happens once, but like it's like you could you could literally years later yeah. still be like dealing with like negative like ramifications of like what your kids saw or like the, the like and it's it's always going to be the worst thing. Like kids will pick the most irritating or like the most asinine or like the most disturbing or like the meanest like turn of phrase or moment or behavior and that's the thing that they'll fixate on and then enact over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So that see, so that's like well, that, that so that was our problem with Boss Baby. So what did Boss Baby do that they were like latching on? I mean it's to? just like the whole thing. I mean just the whole thing like just the way that he talks like I don't want my kids to talk like that. Okay. I don't know. I, I it's been a couple of years. It's been three or four years since I watched it or whatever. But I don't think it's something you can really notice unless you like are in that situation where you have a kid and you're like thinking about how this is going to impact just your way of like being. Okay. But yeah. but that's just like as an aside. But going back to what you were saying, I do agree with you about like the slow, like the pace of like the pace like, is so book frenetic and, like, and frantic yeah. and like and I was trying to like figure out who the family members were and they're singing songs. And the family members are doing, they're like, oh, oh, she's the woman who, like, changes the weather. Oh, okay. And she's always changing the weather. That's just what she does. That's her function in the story. Um, and yet they're all certain, like, archetypes and everything. Like, there's a strong woman sister, and people are losing their powers, and she doesn't have a power, but she's going to reset when they lose their powers or something. I don't know. It's, just, it's very confusing, and, though. And I'm, and I'm also, you know, does this have something to do with, like, Family values in Colombia. Does it have something to do with fairy tales in Colombia? Does it have something to do with like actual? I did wonder a lot about that too. Like some of the things that happen in the movie. When to I watch me, when I watch a movie, I usually pull up Wikipedia and I well, start trying to like figure out like what you know what is this coming from. But you know what I mean though, where there's things that happen in that movie that I feel like there's not a clear explanation for why it had to be that way, or things that seem like slightly appalling, like the whole idea of like she doesn't get to have power, it's like so sad. It doesn't make any sense. And either. then it's just like we're all gonna be so mean to you because you don't have a power, but then it like turns out that like we can sing a song about how we noticed how you kind of like low key embody all the qualities that our powers represent, except you still don't get to have an actual superpower and we're supposed to be satisfied with that. So I did wonder if there was some like Colombian like, you know, story that this is based off of. So like, like if you were a Colombian person who like grew up with like that, like culture and folk tales, would this make sense to you and seem like right and justified? Or would you still just be like, oh man, that sucks for Mirabelle, you know? Like she still, like sure they sang the song and gave her the doorknob, but like, I still think she would have been more excited if she got to be like the kid who gets to like ride the jaguar, or like you know the woman who makes like the flowers or whatever you know. Yeah, we talked a little bit earlier, and I was, I don't know if we recorded or not, but I was gonna say like the the thing about, um, you know, some stories in Disney come from a specific fairy tale, like the Little Mermaid comes from a specific short story fairy tale, right? I think pretty much all but, of them do. But I, but that's the thing, we don't know for this movie. We have no idea if this yeah. is actually coming from a certain story or if this is just kind of like a family that's embodying certain um, cultural characteristics that are prevalent in Colombia as far as believing that everybody in a family is born with a gift or something where they receive a gift at a certain point and stuff like yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, is this a specific story or is this just like... Not that I know of, but I mean, maybe there is one that's like, of you know, more obscure. So most of the other ones are... I think we would have we would have to know. look it up to know for sure, but I, I think that's... It's an more fun to speculate. Yeah. I wonder what that means, though, if, if Disney does take some actual stories part and parcel to make their movie. I think and in other cases, they just say... Oh, we're gonna just like you know borrow little details from your culture and kind of like mishmash them together mm -hmm. into a story that kind of sort of like represents your culture in a way. It might partially be because I mean they're trying to be more diverse, and also but, I mean this wasn't this like Lin Manuel Miranda who's like super hot right now because of like Hamilton and everything. So I think people are like I, I'm sh I'm sure some of it is just also like did the music for Moana. People are super into him, so they're like, what more? What new stories can you tell? But I mean, honestly, like unpopular opinion. Like, I got bored while I was watching Hamilton and never finished watching it. I I have resisted watching it. <clears throat> I, it seems like some, I I just I object on principle to um, what you would call it uh, musicals. It's funny though, because like all Disney music, all Disney movies are musicals. I know, and every time a song came out, I'm kind of like, oh my god, here we go again. 
But but the music except, in Little Mermaid is that's, good. No, that's what I'm going to say. In Little Mermaid, I was like, oh my god, I remember this song, and you know, it didn't disappoint in a way. So, but with the other movies, I was just like, oh boy, here we go again. Did you not like the music in Jungle Book? I find it less memorable. I mean, I, I always liked that Trust in Me song that the snake sings. Hmm. I thought that was very creepy. Like, when I was a kid, I remember being, like, feeling, like, very scared when the snake was singing. Um, and then there's, like, I Want to Be Like You. Mm-hmm. That's a good, like, that's a good number. Really pretty one. Oh, The Bare Necessities. Let us not forget that one. Classic. But did okay, we ever the, figure out the what band... The Bare Necessities is definitely a song I remember. Right? Did we ever figure out what band the Vultures are supposed to represent in that? Was it the Beatles? I think one of them was supposed to be Ringo, but... But there were... But who was I, the bald one, though? Because they had certain hair, and was it like... I don't think all of them were supposed to be the, the Beatles. So I, I think one I'm of them was. I'm about that, but I think during that time... Um, what year was it? Well, that, okay, so again, this is where you have to... When you watch a movie, you don't... You, one does not simply watch a movie. To, to borrow the uh, Mordor meme. Mm. Okay. You you have to watch the movie and you have to understand the, the year, the context, the you know, what was going on in society. It could have just been like modders or right. And the jungle book is another thing that I've considered reading to the kids, but I haven't been sure how it's gonna go. Well, it's uh just you know, it's the... a nineteen sixty seven. Okay. Nineteen sixty seven is when it came racism. out. So um, <laughs> when did the Beatles 1967 was when Jungle Book came out? Yes. Beatles started in 60. 1960. Okay. Yeah. Now, but we also have to consider that at the beginning, their hair was all like kind of like a like a bowl cut type of thing. But that right? was what that one now, vulture was. when did they start? But I mean, who's one the other them, vulture then? But, but there's four of them, and I think the other three are supposed to be other My point people. is, like, I, I think the, the Beatles' hair didn't really start getting crazy until like the 70s, right? Because, yeah, I'm just saying, like, in who, the, at who the beginning, were those they were kind of like, supposed to represent? Like specifically, it could have just been any like British mod style mod mods. Do you think they were not specific people? I think it sounded a little too kind of an amalgam like mod British. I think there was there was something. Isn't there like some distinction between the East End and the West End of London or whatever? Yeah, but the Beatles were from Liverpool. But okay, but you guys are getting really focused on the Beatles, and I'm just saying. (laughs) I'm examining. You're saying they're more like an amalgam of the like. The that mod general, style yeah. okay. 60s. For the, maybe the blonde one, but no. I'm saying for Question. the dark hair. No, I think the dark hair one was definitely Ringo. Ringo, yeah. Guys, forget, that's all I'm saying. Forget the Beatles. <laughs> that, <laughs> I, that's all I'm saying. No, no, I'm talking about the East End and the West End in Britain, right? Wasn't there? London. London, okay. At one point, one of, the, one of the guys said something, what's going on in the East End or something? And he said, oh, nothing right now or something. It seemed like they were talking about, it seemed like there were British guys talking about London <laughs> rather than. You know, rather than the Beatles to me, it just it just could have been like any modders or something in the sixties in London or something. I, I thought because like wasn't there a song in the GTA Five like East End Girls or West End Girls? It was talking about prostitution in London or something. So there was something about that. I don't know. I'm not familiar. Okay, I'm I'm just saying I am not okay. <sighs> Let's Google that. Let's you never know. We're see. I think Google is bad for us. I think it's more fun to argue. And but speculate. We, don't, we don't know the answer though. But that's okay. But there is a right or wrong answer. Yes. Somebody but, knows it. But how interesting is it just to know versus to wonder? Okay, we're to know is the best. <laughs> Apparently you're not winning this. <laughs> we're the Beatles. Okay. okay, we're the buzzards in Jungle. I wasn't saying all of them were. Just that one. Based on um, the Beatles. Okay, okay, you guys are totally right. Yeah, the look of the vultures with their mop chop haircuts and Liverpool voices are an homage to the Beatles. Yeah. And what exactly is the Liverpool voice? Just that, like, Beatles y like, accent, I guess? I guess so. I Why else would they reference Liverpool? Liverpool? Huh, okay, well, I didn't, I didn't know that Disney would have done something that explicit. I don't know that they would do that today. Like, I don't think they're going to have, like, a Justin Bieber amalgamation or something in one of their movies. You sure? I don't know that they would. Would they? I think they would. They just did a boy band uh, animated movie. Hmm. What you know movie what was that? About? No. What? 
Oh, there was some songs from it that popped up on the Disney playlist on either Spotify or Amazon Music. I don't remember which. Rob, will um, you bring me six Triscuits? Of course. It's very specific. That is very specific. <sighs> All right, but guys, I feel like we're we're getting a little pedantic for the podcast, perhaps. Oh, well, we can we can reel it we can reel it back into what like general want? general. Well, let's let's finish up our talk about Disney movies. I mean, because we watched, you know. I think what we were talking about earlier was that, um, you know, as parents, we've watched Disney movies a lot, so we've kind of started to develop, like, more of, like, I guess I would say now I'm more of a Disney fan than I was before. I mean, as a little kid, of course, I liked the stuff, like, as much as anybody, but I would have never said, like, I'm super into Disney, like, the way that some people are, like, into Disney, but I guess now I am just because I've seen it enough that I feel like I have to, like, appreciate what I can, you know? Hmm. Like, I have opinions about, like, which are, like, the best Disney movies in a way that I don't think I ever did before. I'm sad that the first black princess had to be a frog for most of the movie. That was unfortunate, yes. Was that? That wasn't good representation. Uh, princess and the Frog. It's the, the frog prince. It's like kind of like one of the early racist Disney films, right? No. No, but that was like a pretty. That, that was pretty was, recent. I mean, it was. I mean, it was still a while ago, but it was in the modern era of Disney. Thank you. Okay. In the modern Disney era. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm okay right now, thanks. Man. Um. Hmm. But yeah, they still haven't had like a good black. I mean, Tiana is a good princess, but like, she just you know she does spend a lot of the movie as a frog, which is unfortunate. Well. It's like my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm unfamiliar with that movie, though. But mm-hmm. I'm also... Hmm. Yeah, I haven't watched any of the live action versions of the Disney movies, and I, I don't know that I feel a need to, but maybe someday no. I will. The Aladdin one was good, but it was so, so, so incredibly long. It was very long. Hmm. And the Jungle Book one, I know you said you don't like the songs, but like it cut out so many of the songs. Like It barely had the songs. It was really disturbing. Hmm. Um... The Lion King, just, just big no. Wasn't well, good. Did you guys see Cats, the remake? No, but Cap, you Cap. you wanted to watch it. Only well, because Cap was so excited. Yeah, but it's People, gonna be so terrible. Yeah, it looked really. It did not look good. I think the mistake they made was having the CGI ears on the costumes, like the clips that I saw, like the ears were like moving on their own. I think they thought it would make them more excitingly cat-like. And the tails. It was just incredibly disturbing. The tails. It was not good. Did the tails not help you? No. Tell tell about what happened to us with Beauty. She, well, she hit, well, I told Ash a little bit, she hit, she, apparently, she told us it was missing, but it was hidden. We, we looked high and, we <laughs> looked so high and low for this cutie, and she had okay. hit it in the curtain okay. of the windowsill. <laughs> like, nowhere That's near. He looked in the crib, right? we looked in the play place, we looked underneath the crib, okay. in the sheets, See, everywhere. the thing about cutie is that it's the best and also the worst stuffed animal we have. Okay, I, so I, Rob I Impulse bought this in an airport, right? I, you were coming was, home from a business trip. I went to trip. Philadelphia on a you, work trip. You promised the kids something. I promised them You didn't get gifts. it when you were actually in Philadelphia. I was so busy. I was airport. so slammed doing one thing to the next. I didn't get anything while I was there. I was running through the airport and I purchased a very tiny Thai, <laughs> it was a Thai. It's not beanie. a Beanie Baby. It's like the newer version of yeah. a Beanie Baby. It's like a Beanie Baby with like kind of overly large eyes it's like I got, yeah but you got like a keychain one it's like i got a key it was it came with like the clip on kind of like we the had to like cut got. the keychain off because it wasn't appropriate but it, so was, it was but it was like a small very small stuff okay. baby monkey yes yeah. but we saw it's like a two we saw baby monkey it, it's and, a kiwi bird okay that's why she calls it cutie because like when we when she got she was really little when she got she was it. like she couldn't say, so like we said this is like a kiwi bird but she couldn't say kiwi she said cutie hmm. and so like its name is cutie, but it is a kiwi bird. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
anyway, I've impulsed mm-hmm. both these in an airport, and they've been the most popular stuffed animals that either of our children have. You it's time to go to bed, baby. <laughs> you have Kitty in your room. Good night, Miss Emerald. I'll see you later. But they're a blessing and a curse because, I mean, the kids love, the, I mean, she loves She loves how handheld it is. But the problem is the handheld nature means it's so small it often does go missing for real. Because, you know, she falls asleep holding it and then it, like, you know, it squeezes out the side of the crib railing or it goes under cover or something. And it's, like, tiny so it's impossible to find and it's missing. And then it's, yeah, the, I can see the, the, the problem potentially with that toy. <clears throat> but today we think it was premeditated. That's, that's taking it to a whole other level. I don't know. Maybe she's, she's just excited tonight. Or she's yeah, I mean, she, no, she she's excited. I mean, we don't usually have... I mean, lately, we don't usually have, like, guests over. So, you know, it's, it's exciting that you're here. And she also knows that, like, I'm, you know, like, she, she slept in my room last night. That was very exciting for her. So she wants to go back. And, just, you know, there's a lot going on. <laughs> I think she didn't eat very well today either because she was like kind of picky, so she didn't eat like a lot of food and now she's hungry and she she's like the she's like the food mood like like she is the most like Rob you would agree that Emerald is the most connected to like her mood will like plummet connected to like if she's eaten right or not. She gets angry. Yes, angry is exactly. She's so angry. Yeah. And it's like, and the thing is, she's usually so easy going. Like she's, mm-hmm. she's like the easiest person, ninety five percent of the time. Yeah. When she's hangry, it's just like almost impossible to reach her. Like she she's, stops speaking. She's like a bird. She needs constant nourishment. Mm-hmm. She's like a bird. Yeah, she like Nelly Furtado. No, 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 no Nelly Furtado. That's what I'm saying. That's you know, what I'm it's, saying. It's, it's no. true though. No, she, she's and, like a bird. Also, she is like having like a tropical bird at home. Like. Yeah, she's colorful and exciting and nice, but you do speaking, have to feed her all the time. This, I, I got these socks. Unfortunately, I brought them. I tore the heel yeah. out of them at some point. Very embarrassing. How old is that sock? Oh, uh, probably like six months. I don't know. That's not. Yeah, I still shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, I wear them a lot. Yeah, thing, I mean, things just shred. Like, I swear, I'm constantly buying clothes for the kids, and they're always just shredding into pieces. Like, yeah, I don't even know what's happening. Waste like falls out. All right, but guys, what are we doing? Are we recording? Yeah, we're definitely are we watching. Recording. We're, recording. we're recording lights on. So I need to I need to pose this question to you guys again. Of course, you know there's going to be like sobbing in the background. Here. <laughs> we promise. There's sobbing in most episodes of the Rob Burgess show. So a small child, everything Mostly is off fine. Camera. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, I need to pose this question to you guys. Rob so okay, so in my book club. Blood, sweat, and tears into this podcast. That's right. All right, so here's the question. And my weeping children. <laughs> <laughs> my blood, right. my sweat, and my children's tears into this podcast. Right. Right. I think we got a hit. <laughs> now, if your spouse disappeared for several years and yes. then they like return, what's the circumstances but, here? Um, like like they went down in like a helicopter accident. Like, I they, assume like, like they, they, they were they were a professional they're photographer. Or they were choppering away to like take some photos for like National Geographic or something. And like the chopper went down in frigid waters. They were presumed dead. The other people were recovered dead from the wreck. So they were also considered dead. Is this so is like the Tom Hanks like, movie with Tom Hunt. What? Yes. Yes. Castaway. Yes, it's basically like, yes, oh, exactly. Okay. It's exactly okay, Castaway. Except that it's the part where Tom Hanks wasn't actually dead. And he comes back. And he comes back. So but she goes sin- with him in that scenario. Yes, but, he, but I'm saying in this scenario, <laughs> if your spouse comes back from this, but they're missing, like, part of a finger, and they were... And they, Why wouldn't they tell you? And they don't know? tell you what Why happened wouldn't to the they finger. Tell you? They have to tell can you. Can you? Yeah, they have to tell what, you. Like, what you can't good, go on what, without what good reason would they have... What, what good reason could they have for not telling you? Being a drama queen, I think that's well, the Well, because it's like reason. they're waiting to like reveal it at like what a dark moment mean? of the Why? soul or something. But what it's could like, have possibly happened? But it's like, I mean, like if I didn't see you for a long it's time like the and big you, reveal. Like, you just come to back get and over then part of you's missing, I'd be like, my, my goodness, what happened yeah, to your finger rock? I would at least think I would have to have a like explanation of it. Be like, well, this yes. This reminds me about we were talking the other day about... Uh, the Walking Dead, and how the characters are always like they all have some hidden exactly. trauma. Exactly, no, and exactly. And, and they wait till that right moment like, to be like, like and then when my sister, sister was eaten by the zombies. I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, and it's like, and like oh, I understand. Yeah, no, I've lost but people too. <laughs> that's related to my greatest pet peeve in yeah. like stories in general when there's information that is withheld to prolong the drama 
when in reality you could just reveal the information. Like, instead of spending a whole season or, like, an entire book being like, I don't want to talk about it, just be like, yeah, my sister was eaten by the zombies, it was awful, and that's why I'm so scarred and it's difficult for me to trust again. It's, it's, <laughs> like, just, just say it in the beginning and go forward from there. Don't waste an entire story arc being like, all these other things happened because this person couldn't let people in or tell them why. I think it's such an obvious um, problem with The Walking Dead. I'm shocked that nobody on that show seems to have figured out that like every single character is written in the same voice. Basically. That is annoying because it's like there are different voices. Like There should be. Not everyone reacts to trauma in the same way. Some people can't stop talking about the worst thing that happened. And like, surely you've met someone that like <laughs> something traumatic to happened to them and like they find a way to bring it up. Well, when I was detained in the blah 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 because of the... Or, well, when I had my psychotic break. It's like, surely you've met someone like that. It's like, no matter how many times you say, yeah, that's crazy, man. They just keep going. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> and, like, those people are annoying, too, but still they have to exist in a story to counterbalance the people that, like, won't reveal important information about their backstory that you need to know in order sure. to go forward. So what book were you reading in your book club? What was the name okay. of it? So what was I'm, like, book? embarrassed to I mean, reveal the name of this book because it sounds so bad, but let me preface this by saying that prior... <laughs> bad name. Well, let's just hear the bad name. Okay, let me preface this by saying that I've shades. actually... No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're actually better than this, but no, I'm just... 365 right. days. <laughs> no, okay, so oh, I did not actually see that, but I was curious because apparently they've made, they made a sequel to that, though. Whatever. Yes, it's like now she's married to the what? guy that was holding her hostage no. previously, and he's like in the mafia or something, Excuse and now me. she's like a mob Excuse wife, me. but it's like... Excuse me very much. <laughs> but no, okay, so the book is called One True Loves, which doesn't sound good. But like, I have read three other books by this author because this is an author who rebranded themselves. This is one of their older works when they were writing, like, romance novels. Now they write, like, historical fiction that's actually really good. It's, it's, it's like, I don't know if there's a term for this recent historical. Like, they write historical fiction about, like, the 70s, like, 80s, and 90s. Oh my god, 90s. that plane just hit that building. No, pretty much, like, okay, so, yeah. like, one of the, one of the books I, I really liked that this person wrote was called Daisy Jones and the Six. And it was a fictional oral biography like in the same style as like the non-fictional oral biography of like Hunter S. Thompson but this is the fictional oral biography of a 70s rock band called Daisy Jones and the Six. Okay. And like that was really good. I really liked that. There was another one that I read by the same author called um it was like the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Evelyn Hugo is supposed to be like a starlet of like kind of like the golden age of Hollywood. And she was, like, kind of like a Liz Taylor figure who was, like, married, like, seven times. Mm. And you're getting, like, her, like, story because she's, like, dying and she's, like, doing, like, a book. Like, she's working with a journalist to, like, write her, like, the actual, like, story of her life. And it's, like, this whole complicated thing where she was actually, like, a lesbian and, like, all these husbands were kind of just, like, prop husbands to, like, hide the fact she was a lesbian. Like a beard? Yeah, basically, like, whatever the opposite of a beard is. If Like, if you're a woman, would it be not a beard but, like, a... The opposite of Why wouldn't it be a beard? Everyone does a face. <laughs> yes, but like you can only grow a beard if you're a man, so yes, if sure you're, about that? I don't know. I don't know if there's an opposite gender term for a beard, but yes, like I don't know. all these guys were like a beard, but like but it was more complicated than that. Like oh, she God. had like this more whole like <laughs> it but it was good. It was like it was like a good story. Like so both of those were really good and there was another one that I recently read called Malibu Rising, which was the tale of like three siblings who are all the children of, like, this famous rock star. But he, like, abandons them in the beginning of the book, and he's, like, not a character. But they're just, like, living in, like, a beach house in Malibu that, like, it was, like, kind of, like, the only thing they got from him okay. before he, like, but ran I feel, off. I feel like we're missing some fundamental information. Yes. Who is the author? And what are the it's book's like names? It's, like, Taylor Jenkins are, Reed. And what are the book's names that we're talking about? Okay. Daisy Jones and the Six. And fictional. What, but how do we start talking about this author specifically? So my book club is reading a book called One True Loves, which this author wrote prior is this to, to becoming very popular. This is related to the 365 days? No. Oh. No, we just jokingly I, I thought, said it was. No, it's, it's totally not. Okay, well, I missed that because I thought that yes. we were just still talking about the No, no, no. The author so this was. author has written these books I was most recently talking about, which are like very popular works of like historical, but like recent historical fiction. So it's like 
80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, like, history. This book that my book club is reading is an older work that they made, which is more of like just like a romance novel. And I guess it's also historical fiction in a way because it's kind of like, I mean, it's partially, it's split time frame between the present and when this person met both her husband, who she then thought died, and also her current fiance, who she only got together with after she thought her husband died. But she met them in high school, so it's like partially like a period piece of I guess it was like the like what it was like when we went to high school. Mm -hmm. And then it's like current day Okay, so she bonded with her husband over the fact that they both wanted to like leave their hometown and like have a life adventure. And then of course magically, because this is a book, he became like a photographer for like a National Geographic level type of like photography and she became a travel writer. So they're living this dream life. But then he decides to, like, chop her away to, like, take some pictures and, like, fresh water. And that's what she said, too, because it was, like, their anniversary, and she's like, oh, don't go. But he's like, oh, this is, well, this will be so adventurous. You've been to Alaska, but I've never been. I have to go. And then the helicopter goes down, and then he's dead, and then she's, like, so then she moves home. But how does she know he's dead? Like, they find Because the they found the bodies of, like, the other people from the helicopter, so they kind of assume that he's dead, ignoring the fact that... In high school, he was, like, the captain of the swim team, and his parents wanted him to train for the Olympics, but part of what they bonded over was that he didn't want to train for the Olympics, so instead they left town so he could be the photographer. Mm -hmm. But, of course, secretly stranded on the frigid, really tiny island, he's, like, trained to, like, open water swim to safety, even though it takes him, like, three years, apparently. What? And some and three, somewhere in there... Three he, years like, to swim to safety? I think he's, like, living on yeah, the just, island. You have to run that one more. Buy me one more okay, time. so yeah, my I impression that is that, what does that mean? he's living on the island for several years, and while he's doing this, he's training himself to, like, swim further and further. Well, sad. <laughs> so he's, like, swimming further and further every day in, like, the training to work up to the time when he's just going to, like, surge into open water and just go until he can't go anymore in the hopes of, like, finding something. Okay, so he's still alive. He survives. He comes back and then finds his wife. Are we in, now, are we in spoiler territory right now? Oh, definitely, but it's really fine. I'm just, <laughs> who's, who's reading this? I'm going uh, I hope that I'm gonna gonna make a note for myself, <laughs> Rob, of the future, when you're listening to this and editing this episode. Include a spoiler alert for all the things we've talked about in the three days we recorded this podcast. <laughs> all right. So here's the Going thing. Going back okay. to the thing. <laughs> so meanwhile, this is like three years later. She thinks that he's dead. Mm -hmm. She has canceled the life of adventure they were leaving, living together. She's moved home to live with her parents, and then, like, her parents always wanted her to take over the bookstore that they own that somehow hasn't been killed by Amazon, and then, you know, she was like, I will never do that, and now she's like, way, oh, I actually... the bookstore is not killed by Amazon, did you guys watch You? Yes. Yeah. Yes, oh, I love that. We should talk about that next. Okay. That's but a good, so now that's a good she's show. running the bookstore, Okay. Season and now... She's connected with this other guy from high school. Season two was pretty good. Who was into her, but then she was kind of friend zoned, and then like he moved away. But he plays like seven instruments, so I guess now he's like a music teacher or something. And she's like mm -hmm. now they own like two cats, and like oh. every her whole family is very excited about their engagement. And so she, <laughs> but now that her I want you to pet me for twenty minutes, but at twenty one I want you to stop. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You guys were going to do it so well for so long. Until you were doing great until you weren't. But now that her husband with the missing finger is back, it's like, does she want to go back to the life of adventure with the husband who won't tell her what happened to his finger? Or does she want to stay and continue running the magically successful bookstore with the new fiancé who's, like, pretty much perfect in every way? Question mark. Is your hand okay? <laughs> I've been bit by cats before. Yeah. All right, cat. We're back in the back in the room we go. I suppose if that's where you want to. <laughs> She's like, I need to put myself on time. <laughs> <laughs> Too much stimulation with the people there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about was what? You. You. Oh, me? Not literally. You. I was born in Alaska. I got a lot of I got, I got a lot of problems with you people. <laughs> Have you like erected the Festivus pole because? Yeah. Really Aaron the grievances, Aaron. the feats of strength. Come back. Uh -oh. Come back. She's become disoriented and she can okay. find my breasts. The, um, 
Yeah, the uh, yeah. so good. Except that I have some grievances about the second no, season. No, no, don't tell me about the third season because I have it. No third, spoilers. Has the third season come out? Yes, no spoilers. Remember the suburbs? Okay, was that the third season? I thought yes. that was the second season. No. I okay, it was, I so the fourth was... season is going to be Paris. Yes. Okay, okay I, I'm unfamiliar with that. I haven't seen no spoilers for the third season. Right, so that's that's going to be difficult to talk about with some spoilers. Let's talk about the first season. The first, yeah. Okay, okay. And spoiler alert for you, the first so, season. I did try to read the book, but it's the kind of thing where you know when the show is so similar to the book that you start reading the book and it feels and redundant. You just see like what that happened in the show. It's like, all right, I do. I really need lifted. to spend the time reading this. I've experienced this already. I kind of like had that problem with Game of Thrones when I tried to read. The yes, book. exactly. That happened to me too. It was. I mean, there was there were things that didn't happen in the show, but like whenever there was a character in the book who wasn't in the show, I was like, okay, I've got all these characters who I can I can picture who they are, and now you're throwing somebody else at me. Like, how do I? Right. How do I incorporate that? I will say the one difference that I noticed in the book of you is that there's a lot more masturbation in it. Okay. Which, I mean, I guess in the show they were like, people don't want to like see this, but in the book it seemed like a very like large part of like the text. For him, for her, or for both? Both. I mean, because he's like, okay, like when he's spying on her, like, I mean, you remember in the very beginning of that show when he's like the, peep the classic peeping Tom. Yeah. There, I feel like there's more of that, but then also she's like spying on her, and she has like, he's like very like kind of like uncomfortably describing like her relationship with like various throw pillows and like her home and it's like very like it's like yeah just, I, don't know. I, I thought like I thought season one was almost like a perfect season of television in a lot of ways um, season two um, suffered a little bit but it was still I thought the names like love and what, love and 40 40 oh that no, was so clever it was it was too clever by it half. was it was only too clever because like the parents, I feel like, like Love and Forty's parents you. didn't. Just, Love and Forty's no, you parents. You give that a thumbs like, up. I give that a thumbs down. <laughs> no, like, but like Cisco Love and Forty's <laughs> parents seemed like the kind of people that would definitely name somebody Love, but like the the tennis thing seemed like a stretch. Yeah, I, I don't. Like they should have just named him like Granola, or something or other. Like, yeah, something. But I, like so Love I, and I like mean, yeah, whatever that, else. That, that part that was felt a little, a little contrived, from what I can remember. Yes. Um, I did think it was like there was a satisfying arc to season two in that in season one you see this thing happen and you see his process and you see how he got about what mm -hmm. was the woman's name in season one? Oh, like uh, Bex? Bex, yeah. Yeah. You you saw this like this real like fatal attraction kind of stalkerish serial killer. The like not cute be cute in the bookstore and then like the obsession grows and the yeah. I thought it was brilliant. But in season two, what they really confirmed for the audience is that he, it wasn't just Beck. Like, this is his pattern with everybody, right? And if he can't follow this pattern, he's not into it. And when you find out about love and stuff in this in this show, season two, there is a... Uh, yeah, it, it's... But with love, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to talk about love at all without talking about season three because her character is such a important character for the next season okay but again i i, I can't I say have, i'm not gonna say, i'm not no spoilers but it's just it's i've, I've just, got it on my drive like, okay but what do you think about I've like what part. was her friend what was what was Bex friend name peaches <laughs> yeah peaches peaches well like she was her. she was the great granddaughter of f scott fitzgerald so who's like Pe peaches fitzgerald or something right? right yeah 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 and she's the friend that's like she's on to him so he has to get rid of her yeah and and the boyfriend like the boyfriend was disrespecting her so he had to get rid of him but it's like it's satisfying to watch him get rid of rid of the original boyfriend because the original boyfriend is such a douche like what benji yeah yeah like <laughs> with his with, what was his artisanal it was like artisanal soda water or something yes and that was just like that was so like that was pitch perfect. It was Bobby, pitch perfect. I did. Yeah. And they actually do talk about funnily enough to say pitch perfect because they do talk about the movie Pitch Perfect a lot in mm -hmm. that. Oh, well. they? Yeah, I, maybe I, that I, was more in the book than in the um, in the in the book at least. And maybe I thought they referenced it in the show. In the book, they definitely like he spies on her watching Pitch Perfect, and that's like one of the things that he like brings up when they like finally like meet for like a date. And it's like her notice. favorite movie and it's like oh of course you like pitch perfect and it's like 
Mm-hmm. With like Anna Kendrick, like the singing, the weird like singing movie. I haven't seen Pitch Perfect, but like, so you're saying he brings it up like accidentally and outs himself. He brings it up accidentally or... and then he has to like sort of try to recover. Okay, yeah, I was wondering which way it was going to go. Again, I had not read the book, but I did. I did watch the first season a couple times, and I watched the second season once. I'm building up towards the third. Season. You should definitely watch the third season because I mean it's it's worth watching, even though I found it to be very upsetting in a lot of ways. Hmm. Um, okay. Like I'm like I'm not sorry that I watched it, but I also did have a lot of grievances. Yeah, it wasn't what we, perfect. What do we think about like okay, this character, uh, you? What's his name? Joe. Joe. Okay, just like Joe, but he changes his name in C- season two, right? Like it's like Michael or something. Oh, I think he's still Joe. I think he originally might have been something else, but he's definitely Joe. I mean, he's Joe as long as he's with Bex, and then when he's with Love. I guess he does kind of start over with her. Okay. I mean, because that's like a whole new life for him, but it's like... Okay, so... Okay, here's what I was annoyed by. I mean, it was season two, right, where he's like, he has that side thing where he's trying to help out that girl. Well, that's the thing in the both seasons, is that in the first season he's trying to help out that boy who's got like the abusive father in the relationship. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, the neglectful mother or whatever. And that's like he and identifies he, with that. That's like him. And he, and he, he tries to, to help like, that kid, but ultimately, like, he makes that kid kind of like an accessory to Beck's murder, which was yeah, ultra, I mean, ultra disturbing. But it's like the kind of thing where it's like if you're that bad of a person, you can't really do good because you're so tainted that if you try to get into people's lives, even in a good way, you're just going to bring your darkness with you. Yeah. Well, that's that's the ultimately the same question that um, Dexter Newblow was trying to ask and failing to answer, but um, and that was but, another show that I'm very upset oh about. Man, that show. I, I don't want to talk about that show though. <laughs> Are you too angry to talk about it? That that show is just like at such a different level than you. I think you was very. You realistic. was very well crafted. I like you. Se- in season yeah. two, though, he's got the the young the neighbor's younger sister who's being hit on by that actor exactly. who actually wound up being like a, a creepy dude or whatever. Right. So, so in both seasons one and season two, he's kind of like looking out for local kids around the area. I, but again, that's just because I mean, he was like an abandoned youth or whatever, and that was like, yeah, imprisoned by the book. Okay, let's talk about like the okay. So he was like taken in by the bookstore owner who then like imprisoned him in the like cage in the stacks or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's you know, that's uh, yeah, it's problematic. But <laughs> yeah, well. You know, this is our, how you become the, this like stalker guy. Well, I guess. our killers born or made. It's the old question, but <laughs> but yeah. So so anyways, I thought I thought season one was a very like for me season one felt like a real thing that could happen. Mm-hmm. Season two felt a little zany and a little all over the place. And his ex girlfriend is back from Europe and she's still alive. That part was and, annoying. Like I was like they they teased that so much in season one though. They kept being like. But what did... Because they kept... Okay, first, I, I liked first it. it seemed I liked, like they established, okay, he definitely killed her, but then it's like, but did he? I thought that was I thought that was an interesting, like, mystery in the background. Like, what happened to his ex-girlfriend? Like, but then when something they finally there, reveal it, it's kind of like, meh. Well, I don't it was, remember... It fizzled. It was like a lot of build-up for, like, not enough payoff. In season two? Yes. Yeah. Again, that's like, I think it's, you know, the sequelitis or whatever. I think season one was outstanding. Season two was pretty good, but at the same time, it's it's got to be derivative of the first season. The first Strength season was kind of, of a complete pa- complete package. So. Oh, I mean, the first season was amazing. Strengths of the second season, though, I did think, although, I mean, I had issues with the whole 40 thing, the fact that his next love interest was literally named Love, I thought was hilarious. Because it's like, he's obsessed with love. Like, the idea that he's like in love with this person. Not even the this person. Thing. The fact that her name is just Love. Like, idea. I thought that was like a hilarious nod to like the situation. Yeah, yeah. But the 40 kind of like ruined it for me. Yeah, and then the way her family owns the like Whole Foods like imposter like store or whatever, like that was just kind of like, yeah. meh, whatever. I, I need to give season two a rewatch. And, you know, but I feel like season one... Everything seemed plausible to me. Right. I, I don't think he would kill everybody around somebody. I don't think he killed the ex-boyfriend and the best friend and the, you know... I mean, he did too much, and that's why he's, like, in danger of getting taken away. I feel like that's always the problem, though. I mean, if you can just kill, like, a few people, you could probably get away with it, but there's always going to be that one extra kill that, like, get, like <laughs> brings you down, when you know? When you start killing any people in a group, <laughs> you're gonna people get... People are going to notice. Get... People will notice if several group members have been taken out. Like, like 
Realistically, if you're in a group and several of you are murdered, you're gonna be if like, hey, what's going wanna, on here? If you want to kill your girlfriend, kill two or three other people first, <laughs> and that way, you know, because like if your first kill is the one the police are really gonna invest in, <laughs> just right. that way, you know, you, you don't like kill your kill her boyfriend, kill her best friend, then kill her, and then be like, oh, I ran away from New York City, like. Duh. But I did think, I mean, to parallel this with a show that. You have not seen, but I'm gonna do this mostly because I'm like pressuring you to watch this. I did think there was like some correlation for me between like the like love and forty relationship with like Brenda and Billy from Six Feet Under. Hmm. Okay, well I guess I still gotta check it out. You need to see yeah, that show. Yeah, definitely, really good. definitely need to see that. Definitely. Okay. Well, you need to see. We can wrap it up. Surely there's more to say, though. There's always more to say. Okay, what are we talking about now? Are we finished with you, or...? I mean, are we? I mean, you need to see the third season before we can really, like, complete the tricycle. Yeah. As we were arguing about well, earlier, it's, like... It's on my okay. list when I get back to Korea. I definitely want to watch season three of you. Is it a tricycle if <laughs> there's two wheels in front and one wheel in back? Is that a reverse tricycle, or is it still just a tricycle? Are you saying that because of the vehicle we saw today? Yes. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those getting on the highway. I'm like... You can drive a three-wheel vehicle yeah. on the highway. But I think it would be more track. stable if there's two wheels in front. It that actually is more much stable. more stable. I feel like I'm in Star like, Wars Episode One. You're going to have like a lot going on in front. You're not likely to like accidentally like careen to the side. I don't know if though, like if a wind came, She's would back. your back end like come up more? Mm -hmm. She's back from war. Oh, do we just, we just want to say we're sorry? <laughs> she's like, you might be sorry. I'm not sorry. She's like, I, she's like, I'm not sorry that I attacked you. I do feel like being petted again, though. So here I am. It's like my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, this cat. It's a funny one. Come on up, okay. All right, but no biting, huh? She's like, yes. make she, no promises. She, she will definitely bite you again. If, if that's like... She'll bite in a flushier area where she can sink her teeth even deeper than before. <laughs> this is why they say don't bite the hand that feeds you, right? You don't feed her. She knows <laughs> that. When I was washing my hands, I splashed a little water at her. I was like, that's my revenge. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry. You're sorry. We're all sorry. She's not sorry. <laughs> cats don't apologize. To, she's as close to sorry as cats get. <laughs> don't apologize. Don't explain. Don't, what if we, what if we turn you upside down? You just increase the biting chances she by like forty percent. Just increase the likelihood that she's going to like this time go for your face. Yeah. But you know, if you're willing to take the you're risk, point at a dangerous weapon right at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys watched that um, Parasite last night. Yeah. How was that? Um, Good. Introduce Parasite to Ash. Like, how would you um, <clears throat> want to preface watching that movie? Uh, I think it's about class in Korea. But okay. in a really like interesting way, and there's a big shift in the movie about halfway through, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm I'm definitely interested to see it. It's just you know, like I way, can't I can't start a movie at midnight. Learned some before. Korean today. Yeah, yeah. and we we're learned look, enough that we're we looking at a, a whiteboard of full of Korean characters. Yeah, yeah, no, you you wrote you like. I guess you taught us like the alphabet, and then you. Can we count the day as a school to... day? And I'm counting it. You should. But you yeah, no. Four language. Yeah. But you, um, but then you forced us to like decode some things, which actually was fun though. It reminded me of okay, so about a week ago, um, Cap and I were working on a project where like I was teaching him about secret codes, where you have like you know where you have the alphabet and it corresponds to numbers, and you write someone something, and then they have to decode it, and we were like passing codes back and forth to each other. And like what we were doing today totally reminded me of that because you know we have the alphabet and we're just trying to decode it. This was more complex though because I mean I guess I've seen character languages like languages where it's written like in this like sort of style before yeah. but I didn't ever really know anything about them. So like kind of learning about how there's different positions and how the different position affects how it could even be pronounced and stuff like that was like you know that's new information for oh, yeah. me so that was very it's exciting. A, it's a it's quite a different way of looking at a language, but... So, yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, I was like... Is it the dog? He's sleeping. He's, 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 he's talking, talking to, to sleep. sleep. Oh, okay. 
It's like it's like he's, he's barking, but it's like a it's like a sleep bark. I thought yeah. it might be a kid somewhere. Oh no, he's <laughs> just 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 having like a he's probably like sometimes he does like like he'll twitch his feet like you can see like he's running and like he's like at the dog park right now. Mm-hmm. Just like chasing some rabbits or like <laughs> Yeah. But I was like, you know, we did some work with the kids the day yesterday or the day before yesterday, mm-hmm. dealing I guess yesterday. Yeah. Dealing with Korean language and they did a pretty good job, but we didn't really get to like the positions and stuff and then I It's a lot of small I mean they're still getting to like They're very like, small English children. <laughs> I would say that, like, small when I was explaining it on the board on the whiteboard today, they were all like transfixed. I don't know how much yeah. of it they absorbed, but they were definitely like transfixed. So you're probably I mean, it will surprise you though, because like sometimes it's like you'll be going over something and going over something and it's just like it's not landing at all and then other times later they'll say something that's just like, oh, so apparently that did stick with you, you know? Okay. Like, you never know when it's, like, hitting and when it's not. Like, sometimes it's really hard to tell. Yeah. Well, you guys know more about the positions and stuff like that, so if you guys wanted to continue, like, working with them, like, what what do you think this does? Or da-da-da-da, or just look up, like, Korean language things online. Yeah. You can decode it a little bit and stuff. You, you don't have to know what it says. I mean, sometimes you can find what it says. But you can I mean, it would help it so like. we know that we're, like, decoding it properly, I suppose. But yeah, like, well, the, uh, the phonetics, like, yeah, you both did a good job with it. Bob got really into it. He did, like, two pages. <laughs> so, a lot, yeah. yeah of, no, it's, it's good for the kids, though, to, like, kind of, like, understand, like, how much is going on in the world, like, in other places. Because I don't, I don't think they have any idea, like, how big the world is. You know, like, like, kids don't have that same object permanence. Like, especially, I mean, like, the bigger kids now are starting to gain that perspective where they understand when something's, like, far away or, like, soon... But, I mean, it's it's new to them. I mean, like, with Lilac, like, she still doesn't understand, like, like, she's still, like, she'll see someone out the window, and she, like, thinks, you know, like, 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 if Rob goes to, like, the store, like, mm-hmm. she probably thinks he's just, like, hiding in the bushes outside. <clears throat> like, 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 the big kids yeah. used to think that all the time, like, when he would go to work, like, they, like, I, I'm, I was, like, convinced they thought you were just, like, hiding outside. Because, like, to them, like... To, like, a small child, their only perspective is what they've actually seen. Like, mm-hmm. so if they've been at home with you and they've gone outside with you, if you're not at home with them, they just assume you're outside in the place that they've seen you before. The yes. idea that you could be in an alternate location is different. So, like, the idea that you could be somewhere, like, literally, like, on the other side of the world, mm-hmm. that's, like, mind-blowing for them, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, it'll, it'll be interesting. I'm excited to hopefully see them the next time I come back and stuff, too, and just, yeah. Like, because, I mean, the captain's going to be, like, at a whole nother level, I'm sure. You know, oh, my gosh, Emerald yeah. going to be, you know, probably where captain is or further along or who knows. And mm. this one's going to be getting up to where Emerald is, hopefully. Maybe less. Like, again, I'm going to try to do three years, not five years next time. But Yeah, I mean, you got kind of delayed this time. It was yeah. a slight global pandemic that happened. But... Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, Bob, you're recommending that Ash washes uh, Parasite soon. Yes. And I'm recommending that you watch Six Feet Under. I'm gonna, That's yes. an essential show. Like you we do have not HBO watch Max. I know. We could watch that right now. Well, what we're watching right now <laughs> is The White Lotus. It's good. It's really good. It has yeah. Connie Britton, yeah? Yeah. Friday Night Lights. I do love Connie Britton. See, I knew we'd get her with that. Yeah. We <laughs> should record an ending, but like we can still leave it open to like yeah. gather more footage. One if thing, we can. like I feel like we really haven't talked about politics, but. You know, we have talked about a lot of, like, media and media that we've enjoyed and media that we've consumed. And that's, and that's more fun in some ways, I mean, because, like, sometimes people get bummed out by politics. Well, I was talking to my stepdad, mm-hmm. and he was saying that he was going to, like, start listening to podcasts more. But he was like, oh, but, like, I don't want to hear any more about politics because it bums me out so much. And I think about it all the time anyway. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. I think, like, content reviews. And the good thing about content reviews, the problem with the news coverage, which, no, I... You know, I love talking about the news. I love talking about politics or whatever. But the problem is, as soon as you make it, it's automatically dated. Nobody comes back six months later and listens to a podcast about something that happened in politics six months ago, usually. But good but media, like six months ago. Like, I, if I discover six months ago, and the Rob next show. Month, if I, yeah, if I discover the six, the, the, the six feet under, like next month, I'm going to go back and watch YouTube reviews of Six Feet Under. And it doesn't matter if you made them five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago. I'm going to watch your reviews of Six Feet Under. That's the kind of content that people are going to consume, you know, potentially indefinitely. I mean, there's no indefinitely on YouTube. Like, at a certain point, you're, you're out of the algorithm, kind of, but... 
But like sidebar, now that you have like taught us some Korean, yeah, you should like send the kids like some letters. Like you could like you could like send us some mail. Yeah, they would be so excited. I could probably. And, I mean, you could do it in English too, but like you know, you could write some Korean in it, into it also. Sure. Yeah, I could. I could do that. That would be something they would have to figure out. Could your students write them letters? I, I don't know. We could we could start <laughs> looking at possibly like a kind of like a. I'd have to think about that. Like which which class would I have sending letters and stuff? But yeah. I had a German pen pal once. Mm. Yeah, there we could do we could do a legit pen pal thing. But yeah, no, I think I, I think my my students are going to be pretty entertained and impressed to hear that I've taught like two children and two adults. Hangugo, the Korean alphabet, basically. So they're gonna be like, "Oh my god, that's so cool!" And like, they want to know how it goes and everything. So you gotta send me some photos of like what we learned and what we taught when we were studying oh, yeah. and stuff like that. But yeah. So again, we didn't really talk about politics, but like, I do think that, um, you know, scripted content review content is good. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's the thing that I consume a lot. Whenever I watch a movie, like, oh. If it's a factual thing, I hit up Wikipedia. After I finish it, whether it's good or bad, I hit up the YouTube reviews to see, like, what, what did other people think about this? What did people say about it? Did they like it? Did they dislike the same things that I disliked? I think all of those things are, you know... Do you ever go on Reddit at all? I have started going on Reddit for the past year. I don't love Reddit, but, like, yeah, people get... You can find some pretty, like, niche information on Reddit like, sometimes. I feel like there's a lot of people that I, like, don't want to engage with on Reddit, but, like, okay. I have started to use Reddit more just for, like, reviews of things. Like, there's different, like, you know, little, like, subcategories. You can, like, find out, like, what people are thinking, you know? But there's always just, like, random, like, random people that are just, like, the worst that, like, are on there, you know? Yeah. yeah but, I right. mean, of course, I think the place to go now for, like, anything is TikTok, right? And I say that as someone that does not have a TikTok account and is not planning to make one. Did you guys see the OK Boomer girl? It was pretty funny. <laughs> she became like a millionaire after making this TikTok. I'm just saying, like, if you hit it right on TikTok, you can really, like, make mm -hmm. that go. I don't know, man. But are I feel like we are, are in the wrong, are we we're in the wrong generation, generation for TikTok. But we're, it, we're, we're in a weird, <laughs> we're, like, in a weird way. The club can't handle us. Mm -hmm. No, but we're in, like, a generational wasteland, because, like, we're, like... Not quite millennials, not quite Gen Xers. Yeah, we're way too young to be Gen Xers, but, like... It's not even millennials, it's the people below the millennials now that are like, it's like, I don't even, even the people that are like making stuff like should be our contemporaries, they're like, well, I'm 26, and it's like, okay, bye. <laughs> Is that what you say? <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Legal oh. as any. <laughs> <laughs> To bring it back to the original movie we were talking yeah. about. Red Rocket. We talked about Red Rocket last night after we had watched it and stuff. And what I've noticed that both of you guys have done is you both referenced that movie multiple times throughout the day. Like, yeah. oh, remember that was this a, one? that was I mean, that was like one of the more like interestingly layered movies that I've seen in a while. I just want to just watch that movie I mean, again as well. I just want to like watch that again to count how many times they bring that one song back. <laughs> I think it was three or four, four times, I think. I think it was four But I want to, like, die, like, part of me wants to just dissect, like, each of the instances of that song appears and, like, what it means and how well, at the, the whole arc he's, goes. He's coming back on the bus and they're, it's playing. The he's second, beaten. The he's... second time is when the girl sings it, I think. The oh, third... no, I think it played, did it not play between when... That first time when she sings it, I thought it played again somewhere in there. Uh, if, I, if, 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 if it Does it play when he's there, running naked? It plays the third time when he's running away naked from his own house, or right. his wife's ex-wife's house, or whatever. And then it plays backwards at the end in the, in the closing scene. Uh, yeah. I thought, yeah, I thought it was a very well, you, like, I feel like it was a little bit cheap because they bought this one song and they just really? used it like hard. But... It's actually perfect because but it's kind of like a, a motif or a light motif or something like that, a certain song for a certain person or whatever. But you still haven't thought of any actual songs from 98 Degrees, have you? 98 Degrees? No. Yeah, 98 Degrees is kind of a blank. If you told me a song that 98 Degrees wrote, I'd be like, oh yeah, I guess, yeah. When I say 98 Degrees, you can picture Nick Lachey in like a he's suspend... Singing, he's, he's singing, like, he's he singing has on a mountain topless, top. but he has, No, he's not on a mountain top. He has like suspenders. In my imagination, he He's all oil... <laughs> 
<laughs> no, he's like all oiled up and he's yes. topless, but he has a spit like a suspender pants outfit. Ooh, like a yes. firefighter. What's, what's yes. our, who is our target yes. audience here? <laughs> Hopefully over eighteen. <laughs> pretty hot. I'm gonna have to put an explicit here. warning on this episode. Yeah. Don't you no, always? Though? No, no. I didn't know Nick really? Lachey was in Ninety Eight Degrees. Like I, I think only he was know. like the front. It was like him and yes, his, like lesser brother. brother, like side other Lachey. <laughs> Do we even know what that Lachey's first name was? Was like okay. Drew Lachey or something? Well. It, Okay, I, not only, any of the I only know Nick Lachey from the, the. It was a lesser Lachey. Nick and, like I only know him from the Marriage Show. The Nick and Jessica. Was that the name of the show? Back before he was married Chicken to the Vanessa sea. Lachey, the actual. No, I I don't know. Successful Look, Lachey for Nick Lachey, I don't know what happened what before that? the reality he show. Was actually married to Jessica. Simpson. Yeah, but like for like what like. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I'm just saying, we've been married for like more than 10 years. I think Nick and Jessica might have been married for like less than two years. They had a reality show. They had a reality show about it. Yeah, Yeah. but like was their whole marriage just a reality show and then they had to get a divorce and the show was over? We don't know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like I said, my my Nick Lachey knowledge begins and ends with a couple of episodes of that show and like people talking about it on the radio or something when I was going to and from work in like 2003 or 2004. (laughs) I don't know that he, I didn't know he was in 98 Degrees. I know that now. I didn't know he married some other woman later. I he, hosts I show, don't, he hosts, he hosts shows on Netflix. Shows, I care but as a Marco, couple, not I, just like him by himself. It's like Love is Blind. Them as a couple. Where they go into the pods the and you have to date someone. Guys, where you I, get, to new, get a new partner. I think we're overestimating how much I care about like, Nick Lachey. I really don't care about it. doesn't matter if you care about Nick Lachey. He's still you don't have to believe in God. He believes in you. He's not, <laughs> he's not really He's not really happening. He's making himself happen. He's happening. He is a professional... He's making fetch happen. Professional, professional actor. He has got okay. bills to pay Flesh and he's got... Hers. Mouths to feed, and he's willing to post any and all reality shows. He's already purchased the large size jacuzzi, and he needs to keep paying. You know how much the bills. chemicals and upkeep on that are? Not cheap. And you have to pay someone to come with the net to like skim like dead animals and leaves and things <laughs> out of it. I can't tell if we're speaking allegorically or not at this point. You, you I don't think Nick Lachey can tell you whether or not we're speaking allegorically or real. Well, all right, the White Lotus. All right. Are we ready for the White Lotus? I suppose we are. But in this case is... we're not back, let's say goodbye. All right. Well, we're going to wrap up the... Although we might film some more footage, but if we don't. Yeah. This is the end. This for is... now. Perhaps. So Perhaps. final. <laughs> Bringing it right down to ground. So. Again, this, this may be a little bit of a genre shift from what we normally talk about, but this is a, you know, this is a rare three-person uh, Rob Burgess episode with Jonathan Big Daddy Cha-Cha Fowler. Rob, Bob, Burgess, and Ash Carwright. She doesn't get a nickname. No longer perfect. <laughs> <laughs>
Join the Rob Burgess Show mailing list. Go to tinyletter.com forward slash the Rob Burgess Show and type in your email address. Then respond to the automatic message. Also, please make sure to comment, follow, like, subscribe, share, rate, and review everywhere the podcast is available, including iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Twitter, Internet Archive, TuneIn, RSS, and now Spotify. The official website for the podcast is www.therobburgessshow.com. You can find out more about me by visiting my website, www.thisburgess.com. If you have something to say, record a voice memo on your smartphone and send it to therobburgessshow at gmail.com. Include voice memo in the subject line of the email. Also, if you want to call or text the show for any reason, the number is 317-674-3547. Until next time.